Packers were riding three consecutive losses, yet turned in one of their finest performances of the year. They controlled the clock and took a 14-10 lead into the fourth quarter on an eight-yard grab by All-American Billy Brooks and a gutsy end around for the two-point conversion. But with six minutes remaining, Dave Palazzi, the freshman, showed poise and confidence beyond his years as he ball faked once and walked home with the winning touchdown. In just four college starts, Palazzi had proven to all that he was indeed a winner. But today, he'll watch from the wings because Tim Bryant's improving a few things himself. It hasn't always been pretty, but in the pinch, he's delivered. For the second straight season, CU must find a way to shut down an intangible, a quarterback who knows nearly what it takes to win. Live from Boston University in Boston, Nesson presents exclusive coverage of Yankee Conference Football 86. Today, the University of Massachusetts Minutemen take on the Boston University Terriers. It's homecoming day here at Nickerson Field, and the returning alumni have been treated to an absolutely gorgeous fall afternoon. Clear skies, a soft breeze, temperatures in the mid-50s, a perfect day for football, and a perfect day for an important Yankee Conference football game. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sean McDonough. It's a pleasure to have you with us this week. I'm filling in for Ken Bell. As we mentioned, a very important contest for both clubs. As we take a look at the Yankee Conference standings, we see that the University of Massachusetts is tied at the top of the heap with the University of New Hampshire and Delaware, Boston University in the middle of the pack, and trying desperately to move up and get back into the race. Joining me again is former Patriots linebacker Steve King, particularly, Steve, an important game for the University of Massachusetts. We saw the tie with Delaware and New Hampshire. They've already lost to Delaware. They can't do anything about that, but they can do something about the UNH Wildcats later on. Well, this game is vital to them. They need this game to stay on track, and, of course, they had that big meeting later on with the Wildcats, so that's why this game is so important. And, of course, uh, you know, they're a blue-collar team. I, they're the type of team, and not a lot of talent, but they work so hard, and they're doing a good job, but they have, they have a job today that's a must-win for them. Boston University struggling to a 2-2 two and two Yankee Conference record, 2-4 and four overall. Things getting a little bit better last week with a shutout of URI. The defense has been good, but they're still having problems on offense. Well, they are, and of course, not a lot of points in seven games. So they're going to try to correct that today. They feel that after last week's victory against URI, 17 to nothing, they are hopefully on the right track. And I know Coach uh, Stetson is, is hoping that offense starts to move. He's uh, really opened up that offense. They're passing the ball a lot. Historically, they've been a running team here at BU, but passing the ball quite a lot. For the University of Massachusetts, one of the reasons they're off to their great 5 and one start, the story of the year in the Yankee Conference, a sophomore walk-on quarterback wearing number 13, Tim Bryant. Tim Bryant has been sensational. Of course, uh, Dave Palazzi injured early in the season. Tim Bryant coming on, doing a phenomenal job. Coach Jim Reed says he doesn't have the arm of Dave Palazzi. He doesn't run as well as Dave Palazzi, but he's like having another coach on the field. He does so many things well, and he leads that Minuteman team just terrifically. He's a sophomore out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. If there's one problem that he has had this season, it's been in the center exchange with Pete Montini. 17 fumbles already this season between the two of them. Well, a real problem for them. Talking with Coach Doug Berry, the offensive line coach, prior to the game, he said they worked extra hard this week after practice. So they're really concerned with that. He said they didn't have one bad exchange during practice this week. So we'll see. Boston University, as we mentioned, starting to get back on track last week against URI. One of the big reasons why in the victory over the Rams a week ago, the freshman from Silver Spring, Maryland, coming into the starting backfield and performing very well, Vince Jackson. Well, Vince Jackson is unbelievable. Of course, Randy Pettis with that hand injury last week. Vince Jackson came in, and he's got those quick moves. He cuts so well, uses his blockers extremely well. Great speed. He can also catch the ball. And, of course, last week it was a catch by Vince Jackson that started BU rolling. Here, Mancini rolled out to his left, reversed to his right. They set up the screen. Jackson catches the ball. Now watch him use his blockers. He gets a block here from John Tim, cuts inside, breaks a tackle right there, goes all the way for the opening score for the Terriers, and really was the catalyst to that victory. It was a big week a week ago for Vince Jackson. 86 yards rushing and two touchdowns. It's also been a big season for Dennis Gadboy, number four, the split end for Boston University, the senior for Biddeford, Maine. He's been terrific. Dennis had a great game last week. Six catches for 93 yards. He has a 21-game streak of catching at least one pass. Dennis Gadboy now 10th nationally in Division I AA. He has caught 35 passes already this season. 
There's a look at Billy Brooks, number three a year ago for the Boston University Terriers, the all-time leading receiver in BU history. And Dennis Gadboy has sort of filled the role that Billy Brooks filled during his career at BU. He's the man they look for when they have to pass the football. Well, he really has. He doesn't have the speed of a Billy Brooks, but he makes up for it in other ways. He runs patterns extremely well. He has great concentration looking a football in. Here you see the big play last week that Gadboy had, the bomb. He makes the reception, makes the tackler miss. There you see a little early celebration before he crosses the goal line. But just a phenomenal receiver. The thing that impresses me about him is his concentration and the way he catches the football. Gadboy will be wearing number four this afternoon. He had his jersey ripped last week and had to go to the number seven. As we mentioned, it is homecoming here at Boston University, and that's been a good day for the Terriers in the past since 1978. They are 7-1 and one on homecoming here at Nickerson Field. We'll have the starting lineups from the opening kickoff. It's BU against UMass at live Yankee Conference football next. No way this guy's gonna beat me. Not today. I read all about psyching out guys like this. And it works. Get a year of tennis for only $9.97. Less than half the newsstand price. Call 800-228-4420. You'll also get our free booklet with tips to improve your game. Call 800-228-4420. of Boston University. The UMass Minutemen will kick it off to the Boston University Terriers. UMass leads the series in this rivalry 18-13 and all the last meeting last year, a Massachusetts 17-14 victory over Boston University. Dave Palazzi's 17-yard touchdown run, the winning touchdown. UMass dressed in white to kick it off. Very little breeze to speak of as we begin the ball game. As a matter of fact, no breeze to speak of as we get set to begin. We are underway as Rolf Went kicks off. And Boston University with the run back across the 25-yard line. Randy Pettis on the kickoff return, and the Terriers begin the ball game with first and 10 at the 27-yard line. The offense for Boston University, led by the quarterback, Pat Mancini, the fullback, 22, Randy Pettis, the tailback, Vince Jackson, the tight end, Andy Wise, flanker, Mark Ferrara, and the split end, Dennis Gadboy. The linemen for BU, Mark Moylan, the left tackle, Peter Bankston, the left guard, Chris Doyle is the center, the right guard is John Tim, and the right tackle, Steve Benko. From the left hash mark, it is first and 10 for Boston University. Beginning at its own 27-yard line. Mancini to throw on first down. He completes his pass to Dennis Gadboy. And right away, Gadboy's streak is intact. Now 22 straight games in which Dennis Gadboy has caught at least one pass. It didn't take long. <laughs> in his own defense there, and Gadboy with a lot of room, just does a turn up. Mancini hits him right away. The UMass defense, the defensive line, the left tackle, Steve Brothers, starting for the injured Mike Kowalski. Joe Cullen is the nose guard. Dan Sharon, the right tackle. The linebackers, Drew Como, Vito Perone, John McEwen, and Todd Rundle. The defensive backs, Kirk Williams, Bob Shellmeyer, Scott Brown, and Andrew Thomas. It's a first down for the Terriers on the 10-yard completion. Mancini to Gadboy, and it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Terriers operating out of the I formation. Pettis, the fullback, lined up in front of the tailback, Jackson. Pass out in the left flat, overthrown, intended for Mark Ferrara, number 13. Scott Brown was defending on that play, Sean, and uh, he read that perfectly. Got right in the path of Mancini and Ferreira. Mancini had to lay the ball up and was forced to overthrow. Second and 10 for Boston University at its own 37-yard line. Again, the I formation. Gadboy split out to the left. Ferrara to the right. They fake the handoff to Jackson. Mancini rolls away from pressure, throws. It was intended for Jackson, overthrown, but nearly caught by Mike Ferrara, who is in the same area. Mark Ferrara, rather, number 13. Mancini did a great job to get away from uh, Todd Rundle. Rundle really putting on the pressure. 
Mancini escaping him. We're going to watch him here on the drop back. Now watch Rundle come hard. He's going to defeat Pettis' block right away, but he loses containment. Mancini rolls out. He's looking for Ferreira, but it's going to be a little bit overthrown. Well, excuse me, it wasn't overthrown. Ferreira just dropping the football. Third and ten for the Terriers. Mancini again rolling to his right. Throws complete to Gadboy across midfield and down at the UMass 47-yard line. Dennis Gadboy, two receptions early in this first series. Let's take another look. Mancini, a little rollout to his right. Looking, looking, he's going to find Gadboy open. Right there in front of Thomas. And already two receptions for Dennis Gadboy, now 37 for the season. First and 10, the Terriers across midfield. The handoff goes to Jackson. There is a penalty flag down on the play, and it stops the play before the snap. Delay of game is the call against BU. That'll back the Terriers up five yards and put them back in their own territory. The referee this afternoon is Robert Lynch. The umpire, Donald Serra. The linesman, Frank Simmons. The line judge, Charles Callis. The field judge, Robert Sokolowski. The back judge, Frank Spano. And the clock operator is Robert O'Donnell. We've played one minute, no score. Boston University in possession of the ball. First down and 15 at the Terriers 48. The handoff goes to Vince Jackson, and he is dropped for a loss of one behind the line of scrimmage. Todd Rundle, outside linebacker, wearing number 85, making the stop for UMass. Second and 16 upcoming for the Terriers from their own 46. Pat Mancini at quarterback, the junior, 6'3", 220 pounds from Franklin Square, New York. Straight back, looking to his left, throwing in the direction. It's complete to Mark Ferrara, and he steps out of bounds at the UMass 42-yard line. It's a gain of 12 on the play. The Terriers still short of a first down by about five yards. This is a super pass by Pat Mancini. Now watch, Bertucci is right in the path. He's underneath the receiver, but watch me and see. Lay the ball just over him to Ferreira. That's a, that's a fine pass by Pat Mancini. Whistles stopping the play. Clock stopped with 12.57 to play in a scoreless first quarter. It's a third and five upcoming at the 42-yard line. And the referee, Bob Lynch, going over to talk on the UMass sideline. Interesting thing to point out at this point, Sean, is uh, UMass really has been a third quarter team this year. They've been defeated heavily in the first quarter point-wise. They have been a very slow starting team. Have trailed in all but two games at the half this season. Still have the record of five and one. Big third down for BU. Mancini rolling out complete to Gadboy. His third reception, and it's a first down at the 26-yard line of UMass. Well, this is a super job by Gadboy of getting open. Now, he's getting double coverage from Jill Meyer and Thomas, but he's going to roll back towards Mancini right there. He had stopped and came back towards the football. Mancini found him in that open seam. Mancini on this opening drive, four for six for 53 yards. He's found Gadboy three times and Ferraro once. First and ten Terriers at the 26th of UMass. Again, a pass complete to Ferrara. One man to beat. He's going in for a touchdown. Mark Ferrara gives BU a six to nothing lead. What a nice move by Mark Ferrara. He runs a nice pattern here. 
He's going against his own defense. They're backing up on him. Now he just turns up. Mancini with the quick pass. Now he's going to make Thomas miss right there. Hand down keeps his balance in for the opening score. A 26-yard touchdown pass from Pat Mancini to Mark Ferrara. Very impressive opening drive for Mancini. He's already accumulated 79 yards in passing. The extra point from Dan Green is up and good. Green now five for six on the year and point after touchdowns, and it's a seven to nothing BU lead with 12.26 to play in the first quarter. Well, it didn't take long. Mark Ferreira with a good move after the catch. There you see him on the sidelines getting the congratulations from his teammates and well deserved. Now, the key here is Mancini has good timing. Once Ferreira cuts up or turns up, he delivers a ball promptly. Gives Ferreira time to make a move on Thomas, make a miss, and get the score. You mentioned the first quarter problem, Steve, for UMass. They have been outscored in the first quarter 45 to 7 this season. Well, this is something we're well aware of. This is the fourth game now we've covered the University of Massachusetts, and uh, the prior three games we saw them in, they've had their share of their problems in the first quarter. It's now 52 to 7 with the seven points put on the board right away by the BU Terriers. Well, they stay true to form, Sean, and come back strong in the second and third quarter, which they've been able to do, the Terriers are going to need a substantial lead. Kevin Smelly and Chip Mitchell back deep to receive the kickoff from Dan Green. If anything, Green has a very slight breeze at his back as he kicks off. It's a short kick taken by Smelly at the 10-yard line. Kevin Smelly out to the 30 where he's taken down, and that's where UMass will set up shop on its first possession of the afternoon. Kevin Smelly with a big game last week against the University of Maine, a career high of 105 yards rushing. Tim Bryant at quarterback, Al Neary and Kevin Smelly in the backfield behind him. John Crowley, the flanker, the split end, Tom Kaiopa, the tight end, Dimitri Yavis for UMass. will set the offensive line in just a moment. First and ten for the Minutemen, trailing seven to nothing in the opening minutes of the first quarter. The handoff goes to Kevin Smelly, the tailback, and he is stuffed by a charged-up BU defense. The rest of the uh, offensive line for UMass, John Benzinger at left tackle, Bob Graney, the left guard, the center is Pete Montini, Stab Kazarowski is at right guard, Mike Barrett at right tackle. The defense for Boston University after this play. No gain on the play for Smelly. Split backfield, quick count by Bryant. He throws it out to John Crowley. It's complete. And he's out to the 38-yard line. A gain of eight yards on the play on second down for Crowley, who was not expected to start today. No, uh, in practice last week, stretching, he popped his knee out of a joint, Sean, and uh, they put it back in. They weren't sure he was going to be able to go, but a couple of days ago, he really came around. And uh, a real plus for the Minutemen. Third down and two for UMass. Minutemen at their own 37. Bryant fumbles the snap. We talked about it at the outset, and the play is stopped short of the first down. Kevin Smelly took the handoff after Bryant dropped the snap, but he is going to be well short, and UMass will be forced into a punting situation. Well, there's that problem again, and uh, as you say, Sean, we talked about it before the game. They tried to avoid it. Doug Berry, the offensive line coach, telling me they had not had a bad exchange all week in practice, and on the, on the third play from scrimmage, it happens. Dimitri Yavis on to punt. It was the 18th snap center exchange, fumbled by Bryant this year. Whistle sounds. Penalty flags are down. BU players jumping up and down, thinking that the call is going against UMass. And it is. Illegal procedure the call. That'll back the Minutemen up by five yards. Dimitri Yavis is the punter. He's a sophomore from Albany, New York. One of the largest punters I'm aware of. Also the tight end at 6'6", 255 pounds. Well, we've seen him do a great job of uh, putting some punts very high, especially uh, when the, uh, the Minutemen are around midfield and the ball dying down around the 5 or 10 yard line. But uh, he's going to have to get quite a punt to get down there this time. He did that twice last week, twice inside the five yard line. Yavis dropped his punts against 
the University of Maine. He's averaging 37.5 yards a kick. He gets it away. It's a bad kick. Bouncing down. The Minutemen will let the ball roll inside the 30 and down toward the 25. But decent field possession, field position rather, for the second possession of the afternoon for Boston University. They look very impressive throwing the ball and moving their way upfield smoothly against the defense. A 42-yard punt by Yavis. Moments ago, the fumbled snap by Tim Bryant for the 18th time this year. Well, here it is. As he turns, he's losing the football. It didn't appear that Montini had left from the line of scrimmage early. Smelly also dropped the ball. Exactly. Bryant uh, trying to reach out and hand him the ball. Almost a turnover. On first down, Mancini rolling to his right, throwing complete. Mark Ferrara out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A gain of about eight on the play. It'll be second down and two upcoming for the Terriers. And no doubt what the BU Terriers are going to try to do this afternoon or so, it seems. They're throwing the ball on virtually every down. Well, if Mark Ferreira continues to catch the ball the way he is early in this ball game, along with John, uh, excuse me, uh, I almost said John Crowley, along with Dennis Gadboy, it's going to present this uh, Minutemen defense with some terrific problems. Second down and a short two for Boston University. Leading 7-0 with 10 minutes to play in the first half. The handoff to the tailback, Vince Jackson. He has the first down as he makes his way out to the 40. Vince Jackson, a freshman. It's amazing. Uh, he's not a redshirt freshman either. He's a pure freshman. Came into the game averaging 3.8 yards per carry. As we mentioned, a big week a week ago against URA, URI, 86 yards and two touchdowns. First and 10 from the 40. Mancini looking to his left, throwing over the head of Ferreira. It's interesting on that play, as Mancini was calling signals, he looked out towards Ferreira. Ferreira moved in about three or four yards. That enabled him to get enough room for that out pattern. Maybe Mancini called an audible in that situation, but Jim Bertucci, with good coverage, gets him throwing lane. Steve Stetson on the BU sideline, the coach of the Terriers in his second year here at BU, 5-12, and 12, his record to date. Second down, 10 yards to go for a BU first down. The pitch goes to Jackson. He sheds one tackle. Jukes his way out over the 45-yard line, brought down at the 46. Some shifty running by Vince Jackson, and a gain of six on the play. Well, besides that great speed and cutting ability, he's strong. Now he's going to break a tackle here. Gets a toss. Now watch, he's going to make his cut right there upfield. Now watch the contact. He shakes the tackler. That's strong leg drive right there. Now a couple of moves, darting and dodging. And gets a nice gain out of it. It sets up a third and four for BU. At the Terrier 46, and Mancini wants a timeout. Pat Mancini calling timeout. He's six for nine here in the first quarter for 89 yards. He really hasn't been all that impressive in, in some of his starts. He sort of has had an up-and-down season, it seems, for Pat Mancini. Well, I think he made great strides last week in the URI ball game. He did a nice job of directing the offense. He was uh, very crisp with his passing. Of course, it doesn't hurt when you have receivers like Ferreira and Gadboy. But I just thought he did a phenomenal job last week. And uh, he also did a good job when he was fresh and scrambling. And of course, we saw that early in the first series. I think it's really interesting that he and Jim Schumann who started the season almost as the co-number one quarterbacks, really battling it out. Schumann now out of the lineup with an injured hand. But they're the best of friends, roommates, socialized together a great deal of the time. And I think that says a lot about the quality of those two young men, that they can maintain uh, a strong friendship like that when they're still very much battling for the number one spot. And obviously, they both want it very much. 9.02 to play in the first quarter. Boston University out in front, 7-0. A 26-yard touchdown pass. Just more than two and a half minutes in. Mancini to Ferreira. Third and four. The pitch goes to Jackson. And he's going to get dragged down for a short gain, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Good job by the Minutemen as they pursued the play. Again, Todd Rundle, number 85, the outside linebacker, getting in there to help make the stop. Rundle, big and physical. 
He protected that outside leg. A blocker trying to get across his face. He wouldn't let him and makes the play. So the first punt of the afternoon for the Boston University Terriers. John Crowley back deep to receive the punt. Steve Jones with the boot. Caught by Crowley at the 20, across the 25 and 30. He has room to move as he crosses the 40. But a whistle stops the play, and I think Crowley is going to be ruled that he called for a fair catch back at the 20-yard line. That's what it is. He had room to run. But they say Crowley was calling for a fair catch, and they're going to spot the ball right where he caught it at the 20. Well, he was looking into the sun. I wonder, Sean, if he was trying to shade his eyes as he looked up for that football. And the official interpreted that as a, a fair catch signal. And as a result, a walk-off forthcoming against the Minutemen. So instead of having great field position, maybe even a punt return for a touchdown by Crowley as he broke into the open field, it's a five-yard penalty, and they'll spot the ball back at the 15-yard line. He's upset about it. Uh, I did not see a definite wave to indicate a fair catch. His hand did come up slightly. Uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Well, and the rule is, and they make the it terriers. pretty clear that you have to wave dramatically if it's a fair catch because a lot of times people in the past have tried to fake the opposition by just raising their hand but not waving it. This year, if it's a fair catch, you really have to wave. And I don't think Crowley did that, and Jim Reed has a right to be upset. He's very upset about it. So it's first and 10 for UMass at their own 15-yard line, 8-19 to play first quarter. Broken play, the handoff goes to Smelly. He's going to get stuffed behind the line of scrimmage by the Boston University Terriers. Kevin Murphy, number 90, leading the defensive surge for BU. Kevin Smelly missing an assignment there. He actually went the wrong way, Sean. You're going to see here, Tim Bryant reverses out. Now see? Smelly was supposed to come over the top. Instead, he's underneath. Bryant adjusts, but it's too late. Kevin Murphy leads that defense. Murphy, a senior from Syracuse, New York. Because it is a five-yard walk-off, it was first and 15. It's now second and 16 for UMass. Bryant going deep. The ball is underthrown, and it's intercepted. Mike White, the safety for BU, picks it off. And the Terriers come right back out on offense with great field position inside UMass territory at the 47-yard line. Well, Kevin White filling in today. Here we see it. Bryant has a man open down the sideline. He underthrows. White's able to come over and pick it off. Looking for Tom Kaioka on the play. He was open, just underthrown. Second interception of the season for Mike White, the freshman, starting at safety from Winchester, Massachusetts. It's been all BU here in the first quarter. The Terriers leading 7-0 midway through the quarter. Tim Bunnell now in the backfield at fullback for BU. The handoff to Vince Jackson. He darts right up the middle. Gains a couple as he makes his way down to the 42. Gain of five on the play for the freshman from Silver Spring, Maryland. It's been a tough first quarter for that man. Tim Bryant already has fumbled a snap from center for the 18th time this season and has thrown an interception. And there have been a couple of miscommunications in the backfield as well. Pereira split out to the left. Gad Boy to the right. I formation behind Mancini. Bunnell in front of Jackson. Pettis has been in and out with his cut hand. Suffered a week ago against URI. Mancini throws intended for his big tight end, Andy Wise, and batted down on a nice defensive play by Todd Rundle, who's been all over the field here in the first quarter for UMass. Well, Rundle dropping into the flat where Wise was, and of course, Ferreira, or excuse me, Gadboy was behind him deep. I believe Mancini wanted Gadboy. He wasn't there, so he tried to go short to Wise, but Rundle just reaching out there, dropping into the flat, and gets the left hand on the ball, knocking it down. You know, as a linebacker, uh, sometimes the temptation is to look up and see that green pasture between you and the goal line. I think Rundle yeah, saw well, that he had a lot of pasture to run through if he picked that one off. Only he needed both hands on that foot. <laughs> <That's ball>. right. <laughs> Brings up a third and five for BU from the UMass 42. Mancini, quick pass complete to Ferreira. Cuts back across the 30 and down at the 25-yard line. Brought down there by Andrew Thomas, number 25, the sophomore cornerback for the Minutemen. First and 10, BU, and they've looked 
very crisp here in the first quarter. The BU receivers are running upfield in that zone and coming back for the ball. They're executing it very well. There the pass to Ferrari cuts up inside, picks up a great block from teammate Gadboy before Thomas comes up and makes the tackle. First and 10, BU at the 27 of UMass. Mancini rolls slightly to his right, throws complete to the tight end, Andy Wise. He's across the 20 and down at the 18-yard line. Close to another first down, about a yard short. Well, this is like a delay pattern. Wise goes to the outside. Como was covering. He reverses his field, comes back underneath the coverage. It's a short pass, and then he does the rest on his own. Mancini really moving this Terrier offense. He's 8 for 12 in the first quarter for 112 yards. Second down, a long one. Mancini will try to throw, and he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Todd Rundle getting into the backfield to make the play for UMass. Now, they had the blitz on. Schellmeyer, the safety, was up on the line of scrimmage. He was the outside of Rundle. Now, watch it. The blocker takes Rundle, the inside man. You'd think Shelmeyer would make the sack, but Rundle hurdles over the blocker, makes a great defensive play for the sack. He is the leader for UMass in quarterback sacks. That's his fourth of the season, and what a first quarter for Todd Rundle, the junior, from Essex Junction, Vermont, 6'3", 237 pounds. It was second and one. It's now third and six. From the 22-yard line, BU trying to build on a 7-0 lead here in the first quarter with five minutes remaining. The pass intended for Jackson. Again, it was Rundle over there who nearly picked it off. The ball thrown a little bit behind Vince Jackson. And a fourth down upcoming, the field goal team coming on for BU. There's Rundle. He's got his hands on his hips. He was breaking for the tackle, and all of a sudden the ball's right there, bouncing off of him before he could react. What an amazing first quarter for Todd Rundle. Here, Mancini, he just... Uh, is off target here, underthrows it, and all of a sudden Reynolds says, what's this? He didn't have time to react. A field goal for Dan Green, an attempt of 40 yards. The kick is up. And it's good. Dan Green connects on the field goal. He's now 7 of 10 on the season in three-pointers. From 40 to 49 yards, he's now 2 out of 3. And it's a 10-0 lead for BU. And that was a little closer than I think Steve Stetson likes. Robar, the nose guard, had broken through number 73. I thought he was going to block it. But he lifted that ball nicely. And a nice job in the Terriers out to a quick lead of 10 to nothing. So a touchdown pass, Mancini to Ferreira, 26 yards, and now a 40-yard field goal by Dan Green have given the Boston University Terriers a 10 to nothing lead over the UMass Minutemen here on homecoming day. The home team has won every year in this rivalry since 1980. UMass last won here at Nickerson Field back in 1978. And BU hasn't won out at UMass since 1970. Kevin Smelly and Chip Mitchell back deep to receive the kickoff from Dan Green, the junior place kicker from Pomfret, Connecticut. He's a big fella at 6'6", 253. It's taken at the 9 by Smelly. He's across the 20 and the 25 and dragged down at the 28-yard line. BU scoring drive, seven plays, just 25 yards after the interception by Mike White. 239 the time, a 40-yard field goal by Dan Green, the result. Penalty flag down on the play. There's Jim Mercer had brought Smelly down right there a late hit is going to be charged against number 35 Richie Cook not a, a lot of heavy contact there but uh, definitely a little extra action after the whistle that was about a week late BU has rolled up six first downs here in the first quarter. UMass still looking for its first first down. With 4.48 to play, it has not been a good quarter for Tim Bryant. 
the sophomore fifth string walk on quarterback at the start of the summer workout worked his way up the second string in the first game of the season traveled with the team and now is number one Jim Reed a little concerned right now BU really controlling the tempo of this ball game and that penalty really the biggest gain so far for UMass he also has to be concerned with this continuing trend now that his team has been outscored 55 to 7 in the first quarter this season. They fake the handoff. On the option, it's pitched out to Smelly. And he's ridden out of bounds as he crosses the 45 yard line. Mike White, the safety, over to make the play. We got some help from Mark Seals wearing number five, the cornerback. Well, here's Kazarowski pulling. He's going to go down the line. The option, Bryant pitching at the last minute as he's taken. Smelly with the cut to the outside. BU defends that pretty well, stringing it out to the sidelines. Gain of four, second and six at the 46-yard line. Yavis, the tight end in motion. The handoff goes to the fullback. There is a flag down on the play. We'll sort it out. I believe there was a little movement on the part of UMass prior to that snap. Al Neary had the carry, and you're right, Steve, there was movement, illegal procedure, the call. The question is, will PU accept the penalty? There was a gain of only one yard on the play, and it would be third down and five if they refuse it. It's been a good first year as head coach for Jim Reed at UMass. Five and one the record, but not a good first quarter here this afternoon. <coughs> Well, quite a rivalry here between these two clubs. And BU seeming to be the uh, team that's the most fired up early on. The Terriers did elect to take the penalty, backing the Minutemen to the 41-yard line. And it's second down, Andy Levitt. Boston University leading UMass 10 to nothing. Four and a half minutes to play in the first quarter here at Nickerson Field. Bryant straight back, throws it out to Smelly, incomplete. Couldn't make the fingertip catch. Third and 11 upcoming now. UMass has not been able to get on track here in the first quarter. Still looking for first down. High formation behind Bryant. Crowley coming in motion. They fake the handoff to Neary. Bryant's going deep in the direction of Crowley. That ball is overthrown. Mike White, the safety on the coverage. It brings up a fourth down and another punt for Dimitri Yavis. Well, White didn't bite on the play action. He played that very well, picked up Crowley, trying to run deep down the middle. There you see him getting a handshake for a job well done. Dimitri Yavis in the punt for the second time this afternoon. His first one went 42 yards, but a lot of that was on the roll. It was a very short line drive kick. On the season, he has knocked 13 punts inside the 20. Mark Seals back to receive the punt. Another short kick. Seals running up to the 26, and he goes out of bounds at the 27-yard line. BU takes over, leading 10 to nothing. First and 10 on its own 27, a 33-yard punt for Yavis. Well, a little different from last time. He got the roll last time. This time, Seals doesn't allow it to bounce, gets up and makes the uh, catch of that punt. Out of bounds right away, but a very short punt. BU came in 2-4 two overall, 2-2 two two in the Yankee Conference. UMass 5-1 overall, 3-1 in the Yankee Conference. But so far, it's been BU controlling the play. Mancini out in the flat to Gadboy, complete for a gain of about five yards on the play. Gadboy goes out at the 32-yard line. He's really picking apart those, uh, that zone coverage by UMass, finding his receivers extremely well. Good timing, getting the ball off as they make their break towards the sideline. Gadboy has now caught four balls for 45 yards. Has 39 receptions now for the season. 
Second down, five yards to go for a first down for the BU Terriers. The handoff goes to Vince Jackson. He's out to the 35 and stopped right there. Joe Cohen, the nose guard, getting off the bottom of the pile, making the tackle on Vince Jackson. It's a gain of about three. And a third and three upcoming for BU. We're down to three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Boston University 10, the University of Massachusetts nothing. Mancini hands off to Jackson. He's going to be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. And BU will be forced into a punt. Number 85, Todd Rundle. Right there again, he's having a big day during the first quarter. Steve Jones on for his second punt of the afternoon. His first one traveled 34 yards. He's averaging 37.3 yards per kick coming in with a long of 53. This is a good kick. Crowley takes it at the 24, runs left. He's across the 35 and stopped at the 37-yard line. So good field position for the Minutemen of UMass still looking for their first first down of the afternoon. Well, UMass needs to get something going here. Uh, they seem rather flat coming into this ball game. Tim Bryant has got to pull one of those uh, tricks out to get this team going. We've got a quarterback change, Sean. Yes, Tim Bryant won't have the chance to get them going. Dave Palazzi has come in at quarterback. And he's running the option. And he'll be dragged down right about at the line of scrimmage. The ball squirted free. Will they rule it a fumble? No, they won't. They'll say Palazzi was down at the 38-yard line. Out of Leavenstrom, Massachusetts, 6'1", 200 pounds, a sophomore, Dave Palazzi. Well, he comes out with the option right away, and Jim Reed told me yesterday they wanted to run a lot of options at the Terriers. They felt like they could be very effective that way. The Terriers defending that option extremely well. Lazzi only 8 for 23 passing this season. He's appeared in two ball games. He's going deep in the direction of Kaiopa. And it's almost intercepted by the Terriers. Mike White had the first shot at his second interception of the afternoon. And on the ricochet, it was almost hauled in by Mark Seals. Well, Palazzi's just too late delivering this football. It was good coverage. He wanted Crowley deep, very deep. But here you can see he just doesn't have enough room to get the ball there. That's Tom Kaiopa. Excuse me, it was not Crowley. <laughs> He wanted Kaiopa deep. White almost had that his second interception of the ball game right there. He goes up in the air, bounces off of his chest, and then Mark Seals almost picks it off before it hits the turf. Third down and nine for the Minutemen. Here comes the pass rush by Murphy. Palazzi spun away from it, and he's got a first down as he makes his way out to the 49-yard line. There you saw the running ability that Steve spoke of. Dave Palazzi moving away from Kevin Murphy, dashing up the middle and picking up the first first down of the afternoon for UMass. Well, Dave Palazzi, a good runner with the football. He scrambles well. He ducks under Kevin Murphy, upfield, cuts inside of a defender right there before he's brought down, but he picks up the first down. A minute 40 to play in the first quarter. 10-0 BU. Up the middle, the big fullback, Al Neary, and he has another first down as he crosses the BU 40-yard line, and he's brought down at the 39. Jim Al Mercer on the tackle, number 47 for BU. Al Neary, a big, strong fullback. He runs so well from tackle to tackle. Doesn't have a great deal of speed, but uh, has exceptional leg strength. Neary coming off a big week last week against Maine. He rushed for 81 yards and scored two touchdowns. First and 10, the minute men on the move in the BU 39, Crowley in motion. The pitch to Chip Mitchell, running left, flag goes down as Mitchell crossed the 35. Now that's probably gonna be a holding call against UMass. Mm -hmm. It is. Dimitri Yavis filling in for Kelly, the injured tight end starting tight end was out there blocking 
the call may have been on him. Let's watch it here. Number 93, Yavis is at the bottom of your screen. The quick pitch out to Chip Mitchell. Well, right there, watch, Yavis has position, but he may be holding. Hmm. The flag thrown in his vicinity, so I believe the call was against Dimitri Yavis. It certainly appeared to be that way, but we didn't seem to see much holding. Well, once he got turned there, Sean, he may have uh, used one of those little tricks the tight ends have, getting that hand up under the shoulder pads and pulling the jersey in towards him. Of course, him. that never happened to you. No, not too many <laughs> times. Uh, I swore to you. were too quick for that. You'd move away from that kind of trouble. <laughs> over that thing. Palazzi throwing over the middle, complete to Crowley. Crowley's across the 30 and very close to a UMass first down as he's brought down at the 29-yard line. Dave Palazzi providing the spark to get the offense going. This is a slant-in pattern to Crowley. Watch it. Little fake, reverse out, and right there he comes up. The slant-in by Crowley. Cuts inside, makes one man miss. Finally brought down. He's very close to a first down. Dennis Carson on that tackle. They'll bring out the chains to measure. And it appears the Minutemen have the first down, and they do. At the BU 29, the Minutemen trailing 10 to nothing in the final seconds of the first quarter, 35 seconds remaining to be played here in the opening period. We're at Nickerson Field on the campus of Boston University. Sean McDonough along with Steve King. Glad to have you with us this afternoon for Yankee Conference football. Palazzi hands off to the fullback Neary. He's brought down at the 25-yard line, and that will likely be the last play of the first quarter, the clock running down to 13 seconds to go. Well, Dave Palazzi, of course, starting the Delaware ball game two weeks ago, Sean. Couldn't get the job done. Bryant came in, and last week, uh, Jim Reed decided to go with Bryant and use the University of Maine game. Bryant again did the job, led UMass to uh, another victory. But Dave Palazzi back in there to provide a spark for and their he, offense. And he has the UMass Minutemen on the move, but they still trail at the end of one quarter, 10 to nothing. <laughs> 1986 will long be remembered as one of the greatest years in Red Sox history. And we here at Nesson are proud to have been part of it. From Roger Clemens' 20 strikeout performance to the title clincher, this season has been full of unforgettable moments. To preserve these memories, we will send you, our subscriber, the Boston Red Sox 1986 Championship Souvenir Book. To receive the publication, simply remain a Nesson subscriber until November. We'll mail it right to your home. We hope you enjoy our gift. Yeah. Welcome to Fishing the West, featuring the West's most impressive scenery, magnificent sport fish, and top guides and pros. From the Baja coast to Alaska, from the desert lakes of the Great Southwest to the steelhead and salmon stream to the north, each week different pro guides and outstanding anglers reveal their secrets. We'll go after walleye, rainbow, sturgeon, eastern brook, Alaskan halibut, and king salmon. You're looking at Ken Clifford, the junior defensive back for Boston University, who was involved in a very scary play last week, and Steve, you were there for the game against URI. Well, he went down, coming in to help break a pass play up, and he was out until he got to the hospital. Now, it was hard for us to uh, evaluate what happened on the play, since it didn't appear he was, uh, he took a direct hit to the head. He was falling down. He was falling down. He fell on his elbow and shoulder, and it didn't appear anyone hit him in the head, uh, Sean. But uh, he did have a concussion. Uh, afterwards, he said he couldn't recall. That's him being knocked out, not waking up until he got to the hospital. He wasn't sure what happened to him. He wanted to play this week. The coaches would not let him play, but perhaps he'll be back next week for BU. We have an illegal procedure penalty being walked off against UMass. The second quarter is set to begin with BU leading UMass 10 to nothing. The five yard walk off puts the Minutemen back at the 31 yard line. Let's take a look at that play a week ago that Clifford got hurt on and as Steve pointed out it's uh, really tough to tell exactly what happened. Well, to right him as there he goes you down. see him falling down reacting to the football. Now right there 
it appeared maybe he caught the foot of the receiver to the head. Back to the live action. Palazzi going toward the direction of Crowley. The pass is incomplete. Crowley got tangled up a bit with Seals and came up looking for a call, but there's none forthcoming. All right, this ball is overthrown. Crowley looks like he's just trying to prevent Seals from catching the football. Lunging there across Seals' back. The official rules, no interference. Yes, if anything, as you mentioned, it uh, should have gone the other way if there was going to be a flag, but that was incidental contact. And it's a third down and 12 for UMass at the 31-yard line. Smelly and Neary split behind Palazzi. Palazzi going straight back, now throwing into the flat, and it's incomplete. Intended for Chip Mitchell, he took a hard hit out in the flat, and the play was broken up. Jack Reibold really gave a good stick to Chip Mitchell. That was excellent coverage by Reibold. He was just laying off there, waiting for Palazzi to throw the ball. Once he did throw it to Mitchell, Reibold made his break. Good timing. Here's a great view from the sideline. Now watch Reibold break on the ball there. And just as Mitchell's coming down, he applies the hit, shaking the ball loose. Great defensive play, Jack Reibold. Silvio Bonvini in to attempt a long field goal for UMass. This will be 48 yards. He's seven for nine this year in field goals. His kick is up, and it is off the upright. Hit the crossbar, as a matter of fact. Almost had enough, but not quite. Silvio Bonvini had been one for one from 40 to 49 yards this season. He's now seven for 10 on the season, and UMass still without a score. You can see why they call him Bullseye Bonvini. He was on the mark, just a little bit short. A conventional kicker, Sean. We see so many of uh, the kickers today. They're soccer kickers. Not too many conventional kickers no. left around. Matter of fact, in the NFL, uh, one of the last, Mark Mosley, just recently given his release by the Washington Redskins. So the Terriers dodge the bullet. Still lead 10 to nothing as they come on offense just 15 seconds into the second quarter. The handoff to the tailback, Vince Jackson. He's into the defensive backfield. He has one man to beat as he's across the 40, and he's ridden out of bounds by Andrew Thomas at the 35-yard line of UMass. Big gain on first down for Vince Jackson. Well, he gets the ball deep out of the eye formation. He's got a lot of time to look at those blockers up front. He does get some great blocking, but then he puts on some great moves, really cutting away from Bob Schellmeyer there. That was the key move that got him upfield down the sideline for Andrew Thomas in play off of Gadboy's block to force him out of bounds. 34-yard gain for Vince Jackson and a first and 10 Terriers at the 35 of the Minutemen. Mancini throws to Gadboy, complete. Spins away from one tackle and is taken down from behind. Again, it's Todd Rundle on the tackle. We might as well just say that on every play. He's been in on virtually every stop for the Minutemen. The tackle made at the 22, another first down for BU. Well, UMass in that zone, they're backing up against Ferreira and Gadboy, and they've got a lot of room to operate out there. Mancini doing a nice job of timing their cuts or when they're turning back towards the football, getting it there in a hurry, they're making the catches and UMass has got to start coming out of that zone, mixing some man defense in. Gadboy now with five receptions for 57 yards. Bunnell shifts in front of Pettis in the I formation. The handoff goes to Randy Pettis, and he's stopped after a short gain. He makes his way down to the 20-yard line. Drew Como in on the stop for UMass. Como filling in for defensive captain Paul Manganaro. Of course, Manganaro being injured several weeks ago. And that was a big blow to the Minutemen defense. But Drew Como doing a really uh, respectable job filling in for him. Pat Mancini, the quarterback, barking out the signals. He's 10 for 15 in the first half for 128 yards. Naked bootleg running left, Mancini with some room, and he goes out of bounds at the 11-yard line, very close to another first down for BU. They spot it back at the 12, and he'll be very close to a first down. 
Now, we just talked about Drew Como. That time, Pat Mancini with a great fake. Now, if you can see it, see Como comes in number 96. Now, watch him take the fake. He goes in. Mancini rolls out. He's got a lot of room there. Up, up the sideline, being forced out of bounds right there. Very close to a first down. So close, in fact, that they have stopped the clock and will bring the chains across the field. The clock would have stopped anyway with Mancini going out of bounds. Well, Como really trying to crash down the line there. Uh, faked out. Thought the ball was going to Jackson. Mancini pulls it. Comes out of there. And nobody there. <laughs> he had a lot of real estate in front of him. And a first down for BU. I think, Steve, we have to give credit to Steve Stetson and his coaching staff. It's been an excellent mix of play calling, pass and run. They've really kept UMass off balance all afternoon. And the second week in a row they've done this, Sean, last week against the Rams of URI, his staff did a phenomenal job, in my opinion, of play selection. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. The Terriers could pick up another first down if they made it down to the two. Trying to build on a 10-0 BU lead with 13 and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. High formation behind Mancini. Twin receivers split out to the right and Mancini wants another timeout. Second timeout used by BU here in the first half. And I suppose that's the wise thing to do in crucial situations like this. You're down in territory where you can score another seven points. You give yourself a big 17-point cushion. You might as well be sure with what you're going to do in these situations. Well, that's exactly uh, right, Sean. You, you hate to give those timeouts up in case you need them as the half closes. But in a situation like this uh, where a score is so important, especially leading 10 to nothing, why take a chance? Call that timeout. He saw something there he didn't like. Raised right up and called the timeout. Uh, did a nice job. No problem there. Next Saturday, Nesson's exclusive coverage of Yankee Conference Football 86 continues as the BU Terriers travel to Storrs, Connecticut to take on the Yukon Huskies. Both teams find themselves right in the middle of the pack in the Yankee Conference standings and are looking to create some breathing room. Join us live at 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon for Boston University and Yukon right here on Nesson. Your partner and friend Ken Bell will be back. Uh, he has an assignment not too many of us would mind tonight. World Series coverage. Right. He's been down in New York. Uh, he was down there last night, and I talked with him a couple of days ago, and he says it's a media crunch. Yes. I know he was sorry to miss this game this afternoon, but for the sixth game of the World Series, uh, perhaps he made the wise choice. BU with 128 yards passing here in the first half on the doorstep again first and 10 at the 12 the handoff goes to Pettis he's down to the five yard line Drew Como wrapped him up number 96 the sophomore linebacker from North Brantford Connecticut all right now watch this he doesn't have a hole but he slides to the to the left there finally finds a little crack gets up in it and gets some tough yardage Drew Como finally making the tackle Gain of about six down to the six-yard line. It's second and four for a first down. Second and six for a touchdown. Just less than 13 minutes to play in the second quarter. 10-0 BU. Motion in the line. I think the Terriers are going to be faced with a five-yard walk-off as there seemed to be movement on the left side of the offensive line for BU. Well, I think you called it, Sean. That's a big penalty right now. Now, that's going to take them back and give them a third and nine situation rather than second and four. Or, excuse me, I should say second and nine rather than second and four. And time for Coach Stetson to go back to the drawing board. Steve Stetson told me they've been having a lot of contact in practice the past two weeks to try to accomplish the things they want to get done. Interesting, uh, his team seems to have responded well. I heard physically they weren't in good shape because of all that contact, but they don't look too bad here today. Second and nine from the 11. Pereira in motion. The handoff to Pettis. He's back across the 10 and down at the nine yard line. He's also in the center of the field, which would make it easier on a field goal attempt for Dan Green should the Terriers be forced to settle for three here. Todd Rundle having another nice play there. Pete Bingston, the guard, pulling out, trying to kick him out. Rundle getting down low. He got help from his teammates. 
35 year old Jim Reed pacing the sidelines nervously his team already trailing 10 to nothing and BU at the nine yard line then get a first down at the two the pass into the end zone touchdown Mark Barrera his second touchdown reception of the afternoon this one of nine yards and Boston University has taken a 16 to nothing lead this is an unbelievable pass by Pat Mancini. Double coverage on Ferreira. Bertucci underneath. Thomas over the top. And he just splits them. Puts the ball right over Bertucci's outstretched hands. Watch it. Right here. Now watch Bertucci diving, trying to knock the ball away. Thomas coming in, trying to knock it loose. But Ferreira doing a nice job of hanging on. His fifth reception of the afternoon, his second touchdown. The PAT by Dan Green is good. And it's a 17 to nothing Boston University lead. I'm watching that play develop, Sean, and I'm saying, no way. Bertucci has the coverage underneath Ferreira. Excuse me, Mancini won't try this pass to Ferreira. But he lays it right in there. Okay, from ground level, from the rear of the end zone, watch it. Now you're going to see Bertucci underneath, diving, trying to knock the ball away. Mancini places it out there nicely, just beyond his reach. Thomas trying to react. He can't get there in time. Ferreira with a big catch for the Terriers. And it's a 17 to nothing lead for Boston University. While we have a moment, I know Steve and I and all of us in our Nesson Yankee Conference football crew want to express our deepest sympathies and condolences to the family of Ed McGrath, the assistant sports information director here at Boston University. Ed's father, Ed Sr., passed away earlier this week, and Ed's not here at the ball game this afternoon, but we want him to know that all of us here are thinking of him and his family in this time of sorrow. Kickoff for Dan Green. His best pickoff of the afternoon taken by Smelly at the three. Running right up the hash mark, pulls his way across the 25, and he's brought down at the 26-yard line after a kickoff return of 23 yards. The scoring drive for the BU Terriers, seven plays, it covered 69 yards, took just two minutes and 56 seconds. The touchdown pass, Mancini to Ferreira. Now, two weeks ago, Sean, at Kingston, Rhode Island, we saw the Rams jump out to a 17 to nothing lead against the Minutemen. And they came back and tied it up before the half ended. UMass also uh, pulling off a major comeback against the Northeastern Huskies in a game seen here on Nesson. There's a pitch to Chip Mitchell. He's got some running room as he makes his way out across the 40-yard line. Brought down at the 41. Skip Jackson made the tackle. Well, the Terriers had no one on the pitch man here. Let's watch it. Palazzi pitches the ball there. Now watch, nobody on the pitch man. Kevin, excuse me, Mike White coming up from a safety position to make the tackle. First down for the Minutemen of UMass with 11.20 to play in the first half. The handoff goes to Al Neary, the fullback up the middle for a short gain of about two yards, perhaps three. Jack Reibold made the stop, the leading tackler for the Boston University Terriers, wearing number 49. Time out on the field, and one of the Minutemen is limping off. Bob Rainey, the starting left guard, wearing number 78. The senior from West Roxbury is heading off, limping. You can see he's got a brace on his left knee. He's had a few problems with that, and we'll probably see uh, Butler replacing him. BU 17, UMass nothing. Perhaps an upset in the making here this afternoon on homecoming day at Nickerson Field. The Terriers treating their alumni to a very impressive first half performance. Flag down, the pitch goes to Mitchell. He's going nowhere. Dropped for a loss back at the 39-yard line. And we'll wait for the penalty flag, but I believe it was going against the Minutemen of UMass. Well, it may be a holding call on John Crowley. No motion. Illegal motion to call. And I'd imagine they decline it. I would think so. Uh, tackling Mitchell for a loss there. This time they had at least two men on the pitch man, Sean. So no problems defending against that option. It seems the Terriers knew that when Palazzi came in, you'd see a little more of the option game, and they've been prepared for it. The penalty was indeed declined. The ball at the 38-yard line of UMass. 
Minutemen facing a third and 13. Mitchell goes in motion out to the right. Palazzi dropping straight back. Looking over the middle, complete for a first down in Boston University territory. Jay Dowdy, number two, made the catch and picked up the first down. He was tackled at the 43 of BU. And a big first down here in the first half of the Minutemen. Well, a new receiver. We have not seen Jay Dowdy before. Palazzi patiently waits for Dowdy to come open over the middle. A nice pass and a big first down for the Minutemen. Jay Dowdy's a sophomore from East Orange, New Jersey. The handoff goes to Mitchell. He goes crashing up the middle down to the 35-yard line of BU. Good gain on first down of about eight yards for UMass. Bill Butler's in now at the offensive guard replacing Bob Graney. Butler wearing number 69 for UMass. BU leading 17 to nothing. Nine and a half minutes to play in the first half. On second and two, Neary, the fullback, stopped very close to the first down. Al Neary, the senior from St. James, New York, second team, all Yankee Conference fullback a year ago. It's going to be third and short, Sean. Jack Reibold and uh, McLaughlin, the two inside linebackers, playing with bad shoulders today. Now, both those guys, really competitors. You almost got to drag them out of the lineup. They have to be hurt very seriously before they can be taken out. Third down and one at the 34 for Dave Palazzi and the Minutemen. He's going to keep it, running around left end. He has the first down. He goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Chased out by Kevin Pickett, number 45, and Mark Seals, number 5, but a first down for Dave Palazzi and UMass. Well, this is one of the big things Dave Palazzi does better than Tim Bryant. The fake there, the Terriers really loaded up on the inside. McLaughlin giving chase, but he's not going to catch uh, Dave Palazzi. Palazzi, with good speed, picks up the first down. Tim Bryant watching from the sidelines. He started, did not move the Minutemen, did not pick up a first down, as a matter of fact. Dave Palazzi has feared better, but still no points on the board for UMass. Palazzi on the option, pitches it out to Mitchell. Again, BU has the play well read, and they run Mitchell out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. No gain on the play. All right, another shot. Ground level here. Let's watch it. Now, Kevin Piggott is going to have Mitchell, the pitch man. He's going to miss the tackle. But he's got Mark Seals coming up from cornerback to back him up. Mark Seals does a fine job driving Chip Mitchell out of bounds. We have some Yankee Conference scores to pass along to you. We'll get to them right after this play. Second and 10 from the 30-yard line. Palazzi straight back. Here comes the rush, and Palazzi's going to be dropped back at the 37-yard line. Jim Mercer got in there, number 47. The defensive end, freshman from Melrose, Massachusetts. Well, good pressure from the outside. Let's watch here as Mercer is going to flush him up into the pocket, and Kevin Murphy's there, one of the tri-captains. Quickly, the Yankee Conference scores. Richmond leads URI 6 to nothing. That's in the second quarter. UNH leads Northeastern 18 to 7 in the third. UConn leading Maine 14 to 12 in the second. Lehigh 14, Delaware 3. That's in the third. Palazzi going over the middle. The pass is caught. What a great catch at the 10-yard line by John Crowley. In traffic, the ball some way, somehow found its way through, and Crowley made the catch. Or check that. It's Dowdy making the catch, number two. Well, Kevin Murphy really putting him on the pressure. Palazzi able to get the ball off. Now, look at this. Talk about threading the needle between three uh, defenders. And Daddy coming up with a super catch. Here it is from ground level. Now, watch. Bodies flying all around. Ooh, great concentration by Daddy. He comes down with the ball, and that's the biggest first down of the ball game. Back to the live action. Al Neary crashing down close to the goal line. So, Jay Dowdy has not seen very much action at all this season, but he's come in and made a couple of big catches for the UMass Minutemen. He's doing a nice job of filling in for Dan Rubinetti. Some feared that Rubinetti would be missed uh, very much today, but uh, if Dowdy keeps uh, catching a ball like that, they get a very able replacement. 
Dowdy had not caught a pass all season long prior to this afternoon's game, but he certainly looked like a seasoned veteran receiver when he hauled in that pass at the 10-yard line from Dave Palazzi. Clock well, is stopped. There's an injured player down for UMass. That was definitely the, the biggest play for the Minutemen here in the first half. New England College sports action continues on Nesson this Monday evening with New England College soccer as the Penn State Nittany Lions travel to Storrs, Connecticut to battle the Yukon Huskies. Our tape-delayed coverage begins at 8 o'clock Monday evening. Check your Nesson listings for additional broadcast times. New England College soccer, Penn State and Yukon, right here on Nesson, we deliver. 17 to nothing is the score. Boston University out in front with 7.21 remaining in the second quarter. There is a timeout on the field called by UMass. Dave Palazzi is over conferring with Jim Reed. And maybe they're talking about the latest hairstyles uh, that we're seeing this afternoon. <laughs> I'd wear that hat, too, if I had that haircut. Uh, I don't know what's better, the shirt or the haircut. Actually, he sort of has my haircut in reverse. He had it all on top, nothing on the sides. Uh, and I have it exactly well, the other way around. It's a collegiate homecoming. We'll see all kinds of things today. <laughs> Second and goal from the four. UMass looking for its first points of the afternoon. They send Neary into the line, and he gets very little. I'm really surprised, Sean, at how well the Terrier defensive line and linebackers have played against this UMass offensive line. They're definitely at a disadvantage size-wise, but one thing about the Terrier is they're very quick. And UMass facing a big third and goal from the three. Palazzi keeps it. He's down near the goal line. He did not get in. Comes up almost a yard short. And what will Jim Reed elect to do here on fourth and goal from the one? It looks like he's going to go for it. Well, this is a straight option. And uh, he makes a great move cutting up inside here just to get back and... Uh, Get close to the original line of scrimmage. Actually, get, picking up about a yard. They're going to take a timeout and discuss this situation. This is a critical uh, down for UMass. Fourth down here. The decision, uh, it appears they're going to go for it, Sean. Yeah, they're looking at the chart and apparently searching for the play that's going to get them into the end zone for the first time this afternoon. It's, it's early in the game, and we've talked an awful lot about the second-half prowess of the UMass Minutemen. They've pulled off some uh, dramatic comebacks. They've come from a long way back in a couple of their ball games to win. It, this might be the situation in the game, I think, where you'd almost be content to take the points. You've still got six minutes and 23 seconds to play in the first half and the entire second half to go, and you've been a second-half team all year. Well, it's, it's a tough decision. Jim Reed's uh, probably thinking to himself, my defense is not doing uh, the job stopping the uh, Terrier offense, so I need to get seven points. And uh, they're definitely going to go for it. Crowd coming to its feet on the near side as the Terrier faithful cheer on the defense. The handoff to Smelly up and into the end zone. Kevin Smelly with the touchdown. And UMass on the scoreboard. It's now 17 to 6. Well, UMass comes with a new look. We haven't seen this from them before. The wishbone. And it's just uh, a power off the right side. Take a look at it. Neary leading right there over the guard. Now watch Mitchell leaping high in the air. Looks like... Uh, Kevin Smelly has been practicing his leaping. Great job there. Silvio Bonvini on for the extra point. He's 15 of 16 this season. He missed one last week, hit the right upright, and that ended his UMass record streak at 33 PATs in a row. That one is up and good. Bonvini back on track now, 16 of 17 in point after touchdowns this season. And it's a 17 to 7 football game. BU out in front with 6.20 to play in the second quarter. All right, UMass gives you so many different looks. You never quite know what kind of twist they're going to come up with. This time, fourth and goal from the one out of the wishbone. Power football. Neary leading. Now Kevin Smelly does the rest. There's a big stack at the line of scrimmage, but with great leaping ability, goes over the pile and gets a much-needed touchdown for the Minutemen.
BU had taken a 17 to nothing lead on a pair of touchdown passes. Mancini to Ferrara and a 40-yard field goal by Dan Green. That man, Kevin Smelly, has them back to 17-7 with a one-yard touchdown run. Up and over, really not a run, more of a leaping dive. Sort of like one of my old teammates, Sean, Sam Bam Cunningham. Do you know what he's doing nowadays? He's out in California, and I believe he's uh, in the uh, art business. The kickoff is short. Taken at the 15-yard line, some running room, and out to the 36. Darren Hunter on the return. And he's brought down to the 36-yard line. Impressive drive for the Minutemen of UMass, covering 74 yards in 14 plays, eating up 5.23. The touchdown coming on a one-yard run by Kevin Smelly to cut the BU lead to 17-7. To Pat Mancini leads the BU offense back onto the field. They've been very impressive this afternoon after struggling through most of the season. Through the first six games of the year, the Terriers had just eight touchdowns. They had two already here in the first half this afternoon against the highly touted Minutemen of UMass. Now, we talked about the way UMass has lost the first quarter against uh, opponents. Looking at the pregame stats in the second quarter, they're even with their opponents, 45 to 45. In this game, for seven to seven in the second quarter, so they're still even. All of the trends have sort of been maintained as far as UMass is concerned. They were badly outplayed in the first quarter as they have been through most of the season, and they're playing even here in the second quarter, as has been the case. Long pass in the direction of Andy Wise, the tight end. He got tangled up in the defensive secondary. The crowd wanted a flag. They won't get it. Now, Shelmar has position, and Wise is just going for the football. It's incidental contact. They both have a right to go to the football. Shelmar actually uh, did not have an opportunity to to uh, get to that football. You're going to see it's well Ooh. overthrown. Wise uh, getting tripped up. Which, now, you can see Shelmar's got the great inside position. Wise did make the contact. If there was interference yeah. called, it would have to go against Wise. Yeah, he ran into the but back But incidental contact really going for the football. 6.08 to play, first half. 17-7 BU. Mancini throwing into a crowd. It's complete. What a catch by Dennis Gadboy. Out at the 47-yard line, he hits BU first down. And he may be hurt uh, going off the sidelines there, holding his ribs. No, he's, he's trying to go back in. He is going back in. He's a tough customer. Missed most of last season. With now, a full he's going to take the shot. Mancini with great protection from his offensive line. Lays the ball again just over the defender. Right there, the hit by Shelmeyer in the back of the ribs. Gadboy feeling that one with that great concept. He brings the Terriers up to the line. First and 10 at their own 47. Gadboy now six catches for 70 yards. Mancini dumps it off, complete to Randy Pettis. Nice move around one tackler. He has another first down as he's down to the UMass 41. John, I can't believe how far the Minutemen are backing up in that zone. They're giving the, the receiver so much room to operate. There, Mancini has to move up in the pocket. Pettis, you can see, is five yards in front of the defenders, and he's 10 yards down downfield from the line of scrimmage. Vito Peron made a tackle for UMass. First and 10 at the 41. Mancini coming out to the near flat. That pass is complete. Tony Winston made the catch. He was tackled at the 35-yard line by Andrew Thomas. Mancini has been right on target all afternoon. He has really had the touch this afternoon. They're beginning to remind me of the URI Rams putting the ball in the air so often. <laughs> we could be in for a long afternoon, although the clock hasn't been stopping too often because Mancini hasn't thrown any incompletions. He's been right on target, 14 for 20, 169 yards. Now less than five minutes to play in the first half. 17 to seven, BU leading UMass. The handoff to Vince Jackson. He gets very little yardage. Perone leading the defensive surge. Rundle also at the bottom of the pile for UMass. Here's Vito Perone, number 44. 
senior linebacker from Manchester, Connecticut. Second leading tackler for the Minutemen this season coming in. Third down and three for BU. Mancini lobbing it in the direction of Winston, nearly intercepted. Kirk Williams there to make the play for UMass, and he nearly had his second interception of the season. Now, Kirk Williams times this very well. He just doesn't come down with the ball. Let's watch it. Great view here. Now watch him go over the top, extend, take the ball away from Winston, but can't quite gather it in. Another view. You can see him. Good view there. Go over the top. He's got both hands on the football. Winston may have reached back and just tipped it away. The Terriers going for it on fourth and three at the UMass 34. 4.07 to play in the second quarter. The handoff to Pettis. Pettis down close to the 31. That's where he needed to get for a first down. But it looks like he's going to come up short. Now that was a big play for the Minutemen. It appears they did hold him. They did hold uh, the Terriers. And Reed really knows it. Yes, they spot him down almost a yard short of the first down. Pettis stopped on fourth down, and the Minutemen take over on downs first and ten. I was surprised they ran the ball that time, Sean. I really looked for the pass. They've been so effective with it. Instead, they go with the run to Pettis. He does not make it. The Minutemen may be uh, starting one of their patented comebacks. And Steve Stetson looked a little bit disgusted on the sideline as he kicked at the Nickerson Field turf. On first down, Palazzi's pass is complete to Jay Doughty, who's come out of nowhere this afternoon to make three catches now for the Minutemen. He looks like he's been playing right along, doesn't he? Uh, no mistakes, right in the flow of things. His receptions have totaled 49 yards this afternoon. Clock running, the Minutemen would like to get another score here before the end of the half. Trailing 17 to 7. Palazzi dumps it off to the fullback Al Neary. He's out across midfield and down to the 46 yard line. He was tripped up by Dennis Carson, the linebacker, who was a bit slow to get up and he's still a little wobbly. UMass likes this play. Neary just circling out of the backfield over the middle. They're back in zone coverage. He fakes Ribold out there and makes McLaughlin miss. Finally, Carson coming in to make the tackle. Palazzi keeps it on the option. Tucks his head under and makes his way down to the 42-yard line. Gain of about four for Dave Palazzi. Clock running now, down to 2.50 to play. We'll be talking with both coaches live at halftime, getting their thoughts about the first half of play. On second and six, Palazzi throwing it. The pass is complete. No, it's not complete. It's dropped along the far sideline. John Crowley has the football, but it was not a completion. Mark Seals on the coverage, number five, a sophomore from Syracuse. Well, Seals really coming in and delivering a hit here to break it up. As we take another look, Malazzi really rifling the ball out there, a nice tight spiral, a little high though. Crowley had to go up and get it. And while he was in that vulnerable position, Seals really delivered the blow. There you can see it with his arms up in the air. Seals hits him up around the shoulders and he can't hang on. Third and four from the 42. Palazzi will be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. They got him on the blitz. That's Jack Ribold busting up the middle, wrapping up Palazzi. Ribold and McLaughlin coming hard. It was hard to tell which one would make the tackle. Uh, coming in there clean, Palazzi had to turn up right away, but McLaughlin uh, going right with him, making a big sack. Yavis on for the third time this afternoon to punt. His two punts have averaged 37.5 yards. Yeah. 
angling for the sideline, and he's going to do it again. Had two inside the five last week against Maine. They're going to spot this one at the five and a half. Good job by Dimitri Yavis, the sophomore punter from Albany, New York. That was an excellent job of punting the football, Sean. He got a nice tight low spiral, that cop and corner kick. And uh, he's got a good string of uh, punts going down inside the 10 yard line. He's had 14 inside the 20 this season. And as we mentioned, two inside the five last week against the University of Maine. That one, not quite inside the five, but inside the six at the five and a half yard line. See how BU plays it here in the last minute 43 with a 10 point lead. UMass has two timeouts remaining if they want to stop the clock. Vince Jackson making his way out to the 13 yard line. Gain of seven and a big gain on first down. And an injured player down on the field. That's Tony Winston. While we're waiting to see what happens uh, on the injury there to Winston, Jackson on that play, reading the UMass defense, they really uh, reacted to him. Everyone slid to the left pursuing him. He made a nice cut before getting to the line of scrimmage, coming back, making Como miss, really getting that yardage on his own. Jackson, uh, 10 carries for 59 yards. All right. Picking let's up right where let's see what happened. Way. Let's see if we can see what happened to uh, Winston on this play. There's the tackle. And right Ooh. there, you can see Winston was trying to block Bertucci. And the tackler drives Vince Jackson right into his back. And Jackson still down on the field. Well, he really took a blow. He had no clue that was coming. And trying to help his teammate Jackson out by throwing a block. It really takes a shot. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime of this game, we'll get a chance to speak live with both head coaches about their thoughts on the game thus far. We'll review, or actually preview, two of our other New England College sports telecasts coming up this week, soccer and Boston College football. We'll have scores from this afternoon's other Yankee Conference action, and of course, we'll have first half highlights and statistics from this game. All that coming up at halftime. Right now, the concern is for Tony Winston. This is a familiar sight, unfortunately, for BU. Last week, it was Ken Clifford down in the field, suffering a concussion. He was down for 12 minutes. And Winston down on the field now. He's a junior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And that's the good news. He's getting up and walking off the field under his own power. Al Viznik, the BU trainer, at his side. Looked like he might have wrenched his back there as he was uh, trying to drive on that block. He was hit. There you can see he's holding the back of his hip. He should be all right. They wind the clock back up down to a minute 20 to go now. Clock running, second and three for BU at the 13. The handoff again to Jackson. He's going to get wrestled down behind the line of scrimmage. Tony Hunt busting through, wearing number 94 for UMass to make the play. Now, this is a big play for the Minutemen. Watch this. Now, Cullen, the nose guard, is getting good penetration. But Hunt really getting off of his block from his defensive end position. That's a big play for the Minutemen. Now, it puts the Terriers in a third and long. Hunt's a freshman from Bill Ricca, Massachusetts. And I believe this is the first time uh, Tony Hunt has played this year for the Minutemen. I don't recall seeing him playing any of the three games that we covered. And he's not listed on the stat sheet as having made a tackle this season. The Minutemen have used a timeout. The clock stopped with a minute seven to play in the first half. BU 17, UMass 7. The Minutemen hoping to get the ball back one more time and get some more points on the board here before halftime. Beautiful day to be out on the Charles River just off to the west side of the stadium here. We couldn't ask for a nicer day for football in the late afternoon, late fall. And pretty cheerleaders. What more do we need? Or maybe those are the queens for the homecoming. Third down, eight yards to go for a BU first down. 
Mancini dropped back into the end zone. He gets lassoed. Will it be a safety? No, they'll spot him back at the one. His forward progress brought him back out to the one. The clock's still ticking. Jim Reed wants a timeout. His team not seeing him. And they've wasted valuable seconds here. Finally, timeout called with 51 seconds to go. And they probably left five or six seconds. Tick off the clock before they made the timeout call. And that, that could be a crucial error for them as we take another look here. The fake to Jackson Mancini looking. No one open. Now he gets just past the goal line before Rundle wraps him up. He falls back into the end zone, but his forward progress marked it about the one foot line. The official with a good call. And you're right, Sean. They wasted five or six seconds arguing the point with the official. It's going to be a tough punt out of the end zone for Steve Jones. Instead of his usual 15-yard drop, he's only going to have about 10 and a half. He's punted twice for a 37-and-a-half yard average. Ten men up on the line of scrimmage for UMass. The Minutemen trailing 17-7 to with 51 seconds to play. Both sides now out of timeouts here in the first half. Crowley back to receive it. He's standing at the BU 39. Jones gets the kick off, but it's very short. Crowley feels it at the 27, juggled it momentarily. Ducks under and makes his way all the way down to the 22-yard line. So excellent field position for the Minutemen with 40 seconds to go in the first half. And Jones probably just happy he got that one off. Well, they were coming. They wanted to block that one. All he was thinking about was getting it off. It was a high punt. Of course, the coverage wasn't there because everyone was really blocking, uh, trying to... Uh, give him enough time to punt. Crowley with a little bit of room picks up about five yards on the return. They've got great field position. First and ten UMass on the 22. Crowley in motion. Palazzi rolling left. Here comes the rush. He got away from Reibold. Looking toward the end zone and throwing it away. Crowley and Dowdy were both covered down in the direction of the end zone and Palazzi did the wise thing. Crowley may have been open momentarily here. Let's watch it. Now he makes his cut there. He's got his hand up in the air. But what happens is Seals is able to get back and get the coverage before Palazzi spots him. Second and 10 from the 22 with 34 seconds left in the half. BU 17, UMass 7. Palazzi throwing over the middle, incomplete. Intended again for John Crowley, the senior from Lemonster, Mass. Couple of Lemonster young men looking to hook up there, Palazzi and Crowley. Well, he had him open, he underthrows here. The slant in pattern, you're gonna see the ball coming in low. Crowley never had a chance, but he was open. And it's third and ten. They are in the field goal range of Silvio Bonvini. Who's 0 for 1 this afternoon. High formation, Neary and Mitchell behind Palazzi. Crowley in motion. Palazzi's going to throw. Here comes the rush. They didn't get him. Palazzi throws. It's intercepted by Mark Seals. And he's brought down at the 12-yard line. Flags go down, and there's a pileup on the field. Well, this is a poor decision by Dave Palazzi, as you see him going off the field there, dejected. He tried to force the ball to Crowley. He gets away from the pressure. Now as they're bearing down on him, he just tries to force it into coverage, and Seals is right there to make the interception. Now Seals goes down right there. As he's getting up, he gets hit and slammed to the turf. And the flag comes down, and uh, the Terriers get the 15 with 23 seconds. They have a little bit of breathing room. Don't think they'll do anything with it, however. Both sides out of timeouts. BU leading by 10, probably not wanting to risk in this situation turning the ball back over to the Minutemen. But we'll see. I know if they do, that it's not on instructions from the coaches in the press box, because they just went shuffling past us down toward the locker room and had a very happy skip about them after that interception by Mark Seals. Well, they've got to be very content at this point to be going in with a 10-point lead after Hugh Mass was definitely threatening. Mark Seals came up with a big interception last week against the Rhode Island Rams. Caught an interception in the end zone. Today is uh, UMass is threatening 
comes up with another big interception. That was his third interception of the season for Mark Seals, the sophomore from Syracuse, New York. And we have reached halftime. The Minutemen of UMass trotting off, finding themselves trailing by a score of 17-7. to Again, we remind you that coming up here at halftime, we'll be talking with both coaches. We'll update you on the standings and the scores from around the Yankee Conference. We'll take a look at some first-half highlights as well. The Terriers have to be very happy with what transpired, although, as has been the trend for UMass all season, Steve, I thought they seemed to get much more on their game when uh, Palazzi came in for Bryant, and the defense seemed to adjust to some of the things that BU was doing a little bit better as the half went along. Well, BU they, really had them fooled early on. They did. The first quarter was uh, just a total washout for them. The second quarter, they did make a comeback, as you say, uh, failing to score in the, as a half close. But they're still, uh, they've got to be happy. The touchdowns for Boston University, a pair of touchdown passes from Pat Mancini to Mark Ferrara of 26 and 9 yards, respectively. A 40-yard field goal by Dan Green, accounting for the 17 points for BU. A one touchdown for UMass, a one-yard run up and over from Kevin Smelly. Joining us now down on the field is Boston University coach Steve Stetson. Steve, Sean McDonough along with Steve King. Uh, you have to be pretty pleased with the way your club played in the first half against the Minutemen. Uh, without a question. Uh, if I'd done a better job of coaching, I think the score would be a little different, but we'll go with what we've got. Yep. Steve, your players seem to be executing very well offensively. You're picking that zone defense apart. Was this part of your game plan going in? Yes. Uh, this is not what we've been doing normally. This, is, this has been practiced one week. We're having a little bit of difficulty with the substitutions. I'm not sure we know what's going on, but I hope UMass doesn't. Well, it appears you do. Steve, is that in particular what you're upset with? I'm surprised to hear you say that you're disappointed with the coaching because it looked like an excellent game plan that kept the Minutemen off balance. What in particular are you talking about some of the coaching mistakes? I think the game plan is fine. I, uh, I think a couple of the moves going in, a couple of the calls that I made going in hurt us. But Pat made up for a couple, and, you know, we're all right. We just got to come out. They're a great, great second-half football team, and we're going to go talk about that right now. And we'll let you do it. Thank you very Thank much, you. Steve. Steve Stetson, his team, ahead at halftime by a score of 17-7 to over the UMass Minutemen. We'll return to Dickerson Field on homecoming day right after we pause for this message. Hi, I'm Paul Horning, and football's been a big part of my life. To keep up with it, I go straight to the source, the sporting news. For my money, nothing else even comes close. Each issue covers more yardies than you get from broadcasts, newspapers, and all other sports weeklies and monthlies combined. Who's headed for the playoffs? Their conference title? The Super Bowl. The previews, picks, and football's hottest issues. And you'll get the same straight story on baseball, basketball, hockey, and boxing, too. That's the way I like my sports coverage, and this is where I get it, in the sporting news. So can you. Reach for your phone now and call toll-free 1-800-553-4040. You'll get 36 issues of the Sporting News for three installments of only $5.99. You'll also get special preview issues at no extra cost. This is a savings of one-half off the regular subscription rate. It's our lowest price anywhere. So call now, 1-800-553-4040. That's 1-800-553-4040. I consider the entire four years that I've played ball at Mount Union College as fine hours in, in, in my life uh, because it brought me in direct contact with a number of, uh, of people, not only on the football team and, and opponents teams, but in the community, the student body. There were not many black students on campus. In fact, the matter is, there were only two of us on campus, and I, uh, a good friend of mine, Jed Latham, and I, we were the first two black students to stay four years and graduate from Mount Union College. So I look upon that as an honor, and, 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 and today I serve on the Board of Trustees at Mount Union. And so I say, use your athletic ability to gain the educational experience that you need that will be there long after you're able to, to play football or basketball or, or whatever. And there is where the real foundation is. This message furnished by the NCAA. Welcome back to Homecoming Day at Nickerson Field. We've had an exciting football game through the first half here this afternoon. Boston University leading UMass by a score of 17 to 7. If you've been with Nesson this past week, you also know that it's been a very exciting week of New England college soccer and a big week ahead with a look back at what happened this week in New England college soccer and a preview of this week's upcoming action. Let's go now to Scott Gray. 
Last week was a big week of New England college soccer action as both Boston University and the University of Connecticut rebounded from losses the previous week. Boston University returned to action at home on Tuesday night and defeated New Hampshire quite soundly 5-1. to one. The University of Connecticut was faced with a must-win situation on Wednesday afternoon in stores when they went against Big East foe Providence. The Huskies coming away with a big 3 to nothing win. Yet to come and coming up on Nesson on Monday night, the UConn Huskies entertain the Penn State Nittany Lions. Every game a must for UConn now. They can ill afford to lose the rest of the way, and we'll have more UConn soccer action coming your way on Nesson this week. Also on tap, a big game against Brown, another New England rival for UConn, a game they have to win. Also coming up, Rutgers, UConn hoping to get a Big East tournament bid. Also coming up this week in New England college soccer, a game that had been slated earlier in the season, and due to a power failure at Boston University, they were unable to compete complete the game with Boston University leading in the first half one to nothing over Harvard. That game was scrapped. They'll play it in its entirety and with the results of things that have happened in New England college soccer since that game was blacked out, it's taken on a whole new importance. So on October 29th, it'll be Boston University and Harvard in that particular rematch. So New England college soccer continues to heat up and you continue to stay with the action right here on Nesson. Thank you, Scott, and we remind you that New England College Soccer Action on Nesson continues this week, Monday night on a tape-delayed basis at 8 o'clock. It's the Penn State Nittany Lions taking on the University of Connecticut Huskies. That's New England College Soccer, Monday night at 8 here on Nesson. And coming up Tuesday night at 7.30 here on the New England Sports Network, you probably haven't seen too much Boston College football action this season with the Red Sox faring so well in the playoffs and World Series, but that will be over, of course, by Tuesday night. Hopefully the Red Sox will have been crowned world champions and you'll be able to enjoy Boston College football Tuesday night at 7.30 as the Eagles take on West Virginia. We have a preview of that matchup coming up now with Eric Reed. While you may have been spending the last few Tuesday nights watching baseball, we've had some really exciting Boston College football action. The last three weeks here on Nesson, the Eagles have really rung up some numbers. 29 points at SMU, 30 in their upset victory at Maryland, and 41 in their route last weekend over Louisville. So if you love offense, you join us. The Eagles ran rough shot over Louisville here on Nesson last Tuesday, gaining 448 yards. And they were spearheaded by senior halfback Troy Stratford, who enjoyed his 14th 100-yard game, his 100 171 yards in less than three quarters was his best outing of 86 and his finest day since the 85 Cotton Bowl. Stratford enters the West Virginia game just 43 yards shy of BC's career rushing record. Quarterback Sean Halloran has been playing very well lately, completing 67% of his passes through the last four games. And in the last two weeks, Sean's fired four touchdown passes and has not been intercepted. Senior wide receiver Kelvin Martin with 22 catches this season, tied for the team lead with Darren Flutie and Kelvin just six receptions shy of BC's career record. And against West Virginia, he needs just two catches to move past Brian Brennan into the number two spot. In Morgantown, the Eagles will be shooting for a third straight win in their first over the Mountaineers since 1977. Jack Bicknell 0-6 against West Virginia, but his high-flying Eagles could change that. And you'll see it all Tuesday night at 7.30 with former Boston College and Washington Redskins linebacker Pete Cronin and yours truly, Eric Reed. The Boston College Eagles and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Great college football. Tuesday night, right here on Nesson. Thanks, Eric, and we look forward to Boston College football Tuesday night at 7.30 against the West Virginia Mountaineers. We're at halftime here at Dickerson Field. Boston University leading the UMass Minutemen by a score of 17-7, to and we'll return with more Yankee Conference football live on Nesson right after this. If you don't read the Wall Street Journal, you're saving a little time when you could be investing it. Call 800-336-1111 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.50 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.50. Phone 800-336-1111 now for the Wall Street Journal. And here's the chance. Fritz up. The 
greatest point scorer in hockey history. NHL most valuable player seven times in seven seasons. He's Wayne Gretzky, and if you play hockey, you want to play it his way. Now, on video cassette comes Wayne Gretzky, Hockey My Way. Kids can work on this drill. In Hockey My Way, Wayne reveals his special training techniques and talks about the skills that have helped make him the greatest international star in sports today. Your feet are like another pair of hands, and if you know how to use them, you're a better hockey player. From basic drills, crossovers along the blue line, to the subtleties of team play, Wayne Gretzky, Hockey My Way, teaches good hockey to players and coaches alike. To order, phone 1-800-523-5503. Just $39.95 plus $350 for handling and shipping. Have your American Express, MasterCard, or Visa number ready. That's 1-800-523-5503. Makes a great Christmas gift. that do we Welcome back to Nickerson Field on the campus of Boston University. 17 to 7 is the score at the half. BU out in front. We're going to take a look now at some first half highlights. The Terriers got off to a flying start in their very first possession. They worked their way downfield. Took just about two and a half minutes to score the game's first touchdown. And what a big first half it was for Pat Mancini. The quarterback went 14 for 21. Here it's a 26-yard touchdown pass to Mark Ferrara. The Terriers come roaring out here. The quick pass. To Pereira against that zone defense. Now Pereira with a nifty move. His hand down keeps his balance and gets that opening score for the Terriers. The first of two touchdown receptions in the half for Ferrara. Five receptions in all for 71 yards. Tim Bryant started at quarterback, but the sophomore walk-on had all kinds of trouble for UMass. Here he has the bad exchange with center Pete Montini, the 18th fumbled exchange this season for Bryant. This has been a real problem for UMass. And there you can see he tries to make the handoff after getting control of the football. Bad timing. They were fortunate they recovered that ball. But again, that was early in the game, the opening series. And here's another problem he had with Smelly. This time, a little miscommunication in the backfield. Whoops. Well, this time, I believe Smelly was supposed to come over the top. Instead, he comes underneath. Bryant makes the adjustment, hands him the ball, but it's too late. The Terrier defense reacts, and this is uh, really typical of what happened in the first quarter. And that would be all for Tim Bryant, who left without the Minutemen getting a first down. Dave Palazzi replaced him, but not before the BU Terriers put more points on the board. After a field goal by Dan Green, this touchdown pass of nine yards, Mancini to Ferrara, made it 17 to nothing BU. Well, this is a great pass by Mancini. Double coverage on Ferrara. There you can see, he throws just over Bertucci. And in front of Thomas, Ferrara with great concentration. He really takes a lick from Thomas, but hangs on. That made it 17 to nothing. Dave Palazzi came in and got the Minutemen off offense back on track. They finally score on a one-yard up-and-over run by Kevin Smelly. Well, a different look here. They come with the wishbone. Al Neary leading, and there's a big pileup. Kevin Smelly with that great leaping ability over the top, breaks the plane to the goal line for UMass's only score of the first half. And that's the way the half ended, 17 to 7 in favor of the Boston University Terriers. The Minutemen started to get the momentum back just a bit toward the end of the half, but they still have a road ahead of them as we begin play in the second half with UMass trailing by a score of 17 to 7. The first half stats, first downs 11-8 in favor of BU. Rushing yards just about even, 61-60. The advantage for BU of that 61 yards, however, Vince Jackson has 56, including a big 34-yard gain. Passing yardage decidedly in favor of BU, 168 to 94, 86 of those completion yards for UMass from Dave Palazzi. Total yardage almost 100 in favor of BU, and UMass has committed two turnovers. They've also been penalized six times for 43 yards, BU only three times for 25 yards. But do you have the sense, we've talked about it before, Steve, UMass, a good comeback team, and I sort of had the sense there toward the end of the half that they were starting to get uh, their game back in gear and get gearing up for a big second half. Well, I think they really needed a score there, ending the second half, even if it was a field goal, the turnover really hurt them. Mark Seals coming up with a big interception for the Terriers, but UMass with that ability to come back, and we've been talking uh, about uh, the breakdown of scores by quarter. This is their strong quarter coming up, the third quarter. UMass has outscored their opponents 51 to 10. Wow. 
That pretty well tells the tale. We want to remind you, Nesson's coverage of New England College Sports continues. We have one addition to your program schedule that you should make a note of. Nesson will present New England College Field Hockey this Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock as the Lady Friars from Providence College take on the Boston University Lady Terriers. That game will be played immediately following this game on Nickerson Field, and Nesson will bring you tape-delayed coverage Thursday at 2 p.m. with an additional rebroadcast on Friday at 4.30 p.m. New England College Field Hockey, only on Nesson, where we deliver. 17-7 is our score at halftime. Boston University out in front of the UMass Minutemen here at Nickerson Field on homecoming day. Sean McDonough along with Steve King. We hope you're enjoying the football game, and we'll return right after this. Nesson has it all this fall in championship auto racing. The major events in the fall lineup from the Thompson International Raceway big events like the Winston 300 and the World Series of Championship Auto Racing. The Stafford Motor Speedway will be on hand with excitement from events like the Pentex 200 and the Coca-Cola Fall Final. This fall, Nesson has it all in championship auto racing. With the best in fall events, Nesson is your sports connection for auto racing. I'm Charles Schwab. Over one million investors who make their own investment decisions trade with us. Here are a few reasons why. Bill, I got some advice for you. It uh, won't help your golf game, but it'll do wonders for your wallet. I'm listening, Jay. I've been buying and selling stock through Charles Schwab. Schwab? He's a discount broker. Right. I've been saving 50, 60, sometimes over 70 percent on commissions. Well, I've heard of Schwab, but frankly, I've wondered what kind of service I might get from a discount broker. Schwab will surprise you. I've never had better service or faster trade executions anywhere. And of course, there's no sales pressure. Good. I hate sales calls, and I like to save money. Schwab sounds like my kind of broker. For a free booklet on how you can save up to 76% on brokerage commissions, call 800-762-3100, toll free. That's 800-762-3100. Charles Schwab, a Bank America company, member SIPC. Hi, everybody. This is Bean Gene Okerlin reminding you to join us for the World Wrestling Federation Superstars of Wrestling with host Vince McMahon, Jesse the Body Ventura, and, of course, Bruno San Martino and top international stars from throughout the world, including the heavyweight champion Hulk Hogan, tag team champions, the British Bulldogs. Yes, it's the Superstars of Wrestling from the World Wrestling Federation right here every week. Stay tuned to Nesson tonight as our continuing coverage of New England College Sports brings you the excitement of Hockey East. The Lowell Chiefs take on the New Hampshire Wildcats from Snively Arena in Durham, New Hampshire. You'll see all the action live at 7.30 following the Hockey East report with Eric Reed. That's Lowell and UNH tonight right here on Nesson, your home for Hockey East. Next Saturday, Nesson's exclusive coverage of Yankee Conference Football 86 continues as the Boston University Terriers travel to stores Connecticut to take on the Yukon Huskies. Both teams find themselves right in the middle of the pack in the Yankee Conference standings, and they're looking to create some breathing room. Join us live at 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon for BU and UConn right here on Nesson. And welcome back to Nickerson Field. We are at halftime on homecoming day. The Terriers have a winning tradition on homecoming day. 7-1 on homecoming since 1978. The one loss was last year to URI, 34-19. And they enjoy a 17-7 lead over UMass here at the half. But as Steve has pointed out, UMass, very impressive third quarter team, 51-10 outscoring their opposition. UMass hasn't really shown any signs of slowing down that passing attack of the Terriers. Sean, and this could be critical as the game goes on. If they don't make the proper adjustments at halftime to shore up their zone defenses, mix some man coverages in, I would think they're going to have serious problems with this Terrier team. The crowd here has been enjoying an outstanding performance by the University of Massachusetts band, and now the BU band is out on the field. Taking a look at some of the other individual stats from the first half, we mentioned Vince Jackson leading all rushers with 56 yards. He got the bulk of the work for BU. Randy Pettis, 11 yards on four carries. Mancini was 14 of 21 for 168 yards. Gadboy, six receptions for BU for 70 yards. Ferrara, five for 71. On the other side of the ledger, the leading rusher for UMass, Al Neary, the big fullback, six carries and 26 yards. Dave Palazzi, seven carries for 12 yards. Chip Mitchell, 
four carries for 18 yards. Kevin Smelly, their leading rusher, really hasn't got on track in the first half. He really hasn't, and I think that Jim Reed felt that uh, he would have success in the first half coming off the option, and uh, he had told me, as I had said earlier in the first half, that he didn't feel BU's defense could get a pitch man on him in certain situations. So far, they've done a good job. We saw one instance where they did not have a defender on him on the pitch. He uh, got a good gain on that play, but they came right back on the next play, option to the opposite side. It, it, he was thrown for a loss on the play, Sean, and uh, from there on, uh, besides the touchdown, Kevin Smelly has not had a good day against this Terrier defense. Let's update you now on some Yankee Conference football scores from this afternoon. In the third quarter, Connecticut leads Maine by a score of 21 to 12. Uh, not in Yankee Conference, but still a game of great interest. Boston College leading West Virginia by a score of 19 to 10. They have 7.23 to play in that football game. One minute left in the third quarter. New Hampshire leads Northeastern 18 to 13. The Huskies coming back at one time. They trailed 18 to 7. Richmond at the half leading Rhode Island 14 to nothing. End of the first quarter, Colgate 10, Columbia nothing. Lehigh leads Delaware by a score of 14 to 3. They are now in the third quarter of play at Delaware and of course here at Nickerson Field in Boston it's BU 17 and UMass 7 the Minutemen a little slow coming out on the field here for second half action they probably thought they had a lot to talk about at the break not a very impressive first half performance by the five and one Minutemen as they took on the Boston University Terriers who came in it at two and four but two and two in the conference and a win here this afternoon by BU gives UMass and BU the exact same record in conference play at three and two. So we haven't talked much about BU as far as the Yankee conference race is concerned, but a win here this afternoon, and they're dead even with the UMass Minutemen. Well, talking with Steve Stetson before the game, he definitely feels they've got a shot to be competitive in this Yankee conference the rest of the season. Down on the field, Jim Reed, the head coach of the UMass Minutemen, joins us now. Coach, uh, your team is putting you through some heartache here all season long, really, in the first half. You've got to be a little distressed. I know you pulled off the comebacks in the half and the second half in the past, but you can't be pleased with what happened in the first half here this afternoon falling behind again. No, we didn't adjust real well to some of the new things they were doing, and also we stopped ourselves with some penalties and some good hard hitting by BU once we did get in there to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, in scoring position. Jim, uh, you've had some problems uh, running the zone defense. Mancini's really putting the ball in there. Any adjustments you made at halftime to compensate for that? Well, the first thing we did was check and make sure we had 11 guys on the field. <laughs> we, we do. So now we're going to try to just cover them up tighter and, and quit playing back so much and get after and be aggressive. All right. Thanks very hey, much, Jim. See you, Steve. Good All luck. right. Jim Reed trying to get untangled from our microphone and get ready for the second half of play. We appreciate both coaches taking the time out from halftime to visit with us. And you notice something different about the BU attack already as they come out here in the second half, Steve. Well, with a little help from our spotters, uh, when uh, the captains came out early onto the field, they've got red uniforms on. I mean, uh, from top to bottom. They switched from their white pants and have put on their red pants, so now they have red pants and jerseys. Maybe they had problems uh, since UMass is also a team with the colors of red and white. Maybe those white pants uh, gave the quarterback a problem or something, Sean. I don't know. Interesting. If it did, it certainly didn't seem to affect the statistics of Pat Mancini in the first half, but there you see it. The all red uniforms now being worn by BU. They changed at the half after wearing white pants in the first half of play. Maybe a little psychological move? I don't know, it couldn't be superstition, I wouldn't think, because they were ahead 17 to seven in the white pants. But here we go, second half set to begin with BU leading UMass, 17 to seven. Dan Green's kick spins down to Kevin Smelly at the 10 yard line. And he's going to be stopped short of the 25 yard line. Skip Jackson making the tackle on special teams. Skip had a big week last week, as we mentioned, against URI, and for his efforts, was voted the co-defensive player of the week for ECAC Division 1AA. Skip's a sophomore, was in on 13 tackles, eight of them solo, broke up four passes and made an interception in the game here on Nesson last week against URI. And he was duly rewarded. He shared that co-defensive player of the week with Cornell's Jim Frontero. Dave Palazzi at quarterback. Pitches it out to Kevin Smelly. 
Svelli trying to turn the corner. He does, but doesn't get very much. Driven back by Jack Reibold and a host of tacklers from BU as he made his way up to about the 28-yard line. That was great pursuit by this Terrier defense. They kept stringing that play out. Kevin, uh, excuse me, Smelly having to go wide, trying to get outside, being pursued there by McLaughlin Rival coming into your picture there, hammering him with help from Mark Seals. Smelly having a very tough afternoon, six carries for eight yards. He gets the call again on second down, and he makes his way to the 30. Another short gain, this time of about two, and UMass will be facing a third and four. Smelly experiencing the highs and lows really one week to the next. Had a career high 105 yards against Maine last week. This week now just 11 yards on seven carries. We've played a minute and 15 seconds here in the third quarter. BU 17, UMass 7, third and four for the Minutemen. Smelly in motion. Neary the lone setback behind Palazzi. Palazzi throws in the direction of Smelly. He has the first down as he crosses the 35-yard line and gets to the 36. Keith McLaughlin in on the stop for Boston University, along with Skip Jackson, number 27. Kevin Smelly having his problems, as you say, running out of the backfield. This time they sit him in motion, use him as a receiver, and he gets the job done. First and ten, UMass. Two receivers split out to the right. Now Crowley goes in motion. The handoff up the middle to Neary. A flag is down. Neary has a first down at the play stands as he goes over the 46-yard line. But we'll sort out the penalty. UMass was penalized six times in the first half, but they're pointing as if this one's going against BU, and it is offside the call. Well, BU likes to crowd that line of scrimmage, uh, get up tight. They're very quick, so they can afford to crowd the line of scrimmage. That time, someone uh, crowding it a little bit too much. UMass is going to refuse that penalty, Sean. And on the gate of 11 by Al Neary, it's a first down. Bob Lynch winds up the clock. 13 minutes remaining third quarter. A 10-point BU lead. I formation behind Palazzi. Again, it's Dowdy and Crowley out to the right. Again, the handoff to Neary. And he stopped after a very short game, short of the 50-yard line. They marked his forward progress out to the 49, and it's a gain of two and a half. Dennis Carson, number 36, leading the defensive surge. He's just a freshman from Coral Springs, Florida. Second down, eight from the UMass 48-yard line. Crowley again in motion. This time Palazzi dropped the snap, pitches it back to Smelly, nowhere to run. He's going to get swarmed under back of the 45-yard line. Jim Mercer in on the tackle, number 47 for BU. Kevin Murphy also there, so is Jack Reibold, a host of the entirely red-clad BU Terriers there to make the play. That was over half the team. Now there's the bad snap. Brian has been the victim up to now. This time Palazzi has problems. He picks it up, tosses the ball to Smelly. But the Terriers react very well. Another view. There's the bad exchange, a quick recovery in the toss to Smelly, but it uh, doesn't help them. So now it's third and 11, and Palazzi forced to throw. Looking for Crowley. Has Crowley at the 40-yard line. It's a first down for UMass and a big third down completion. Dave Palazzi to John Crowley. Well, Mark Seals had excellent coverage on Crowley. Palazzi threw the ball low, and Crowley makes a nice adjustment from ground level. Now, what's this ball? He has to put it low because Seals has tight coverage. Look at the adjustment by Crowley to come back for the football. Great reception, John Crowley. His third reception of the afternoon. From the BU 41, first and 10. Again, Crowley in motion. They fake the handoff to Neary. Palazzi wrapped up and dropped by Jim Mercer, the freshman from Melrose, Mass. It's a loss of two. Well, UMass is getting frustrated trying to run that option. Uh, the Terriers doing a great job. 
And this is this is an area I really felt they'd have problems with, Sean. I didn't think they'd be able to stop that array of options that UMass sends at you. But they've done a super job today. You saw in Jim Mercer's uniform, his entire first name spelled out. His brother John is number 37, also plays here at BU, his older brother. John's a sophomore, Jim's a freshman. Palazzi. Under pressure, dumps it off to Smelly. Smelly wrapped up by McLaughlin and dropped at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of about four for the UMass Minutemen, but still a big third down again facing UMass. Third and about eight and a half yards to go for a first down. Jim Reed spent 12 years as an assistant coach before getting the opportunity to be the head coach. And he's taken advantage of that opportunity in his first season, leading the Minutemen to a 5-1 and one record. Glad to see loyalty rewarded. He had a chance to leave and go other places. Decided to stay, and his patience was rewarded. Palazzi dumps it off, complete to Neary, but he's dragged down short of a first down. Jack Reibold made the stop. Neary dropped it about the 34, and he'll be a good two and a half or three yards short of a first down. Well, they're coming with the blitz here. He has to get the, rid of the ball quickly to Neary, circling out of the backfield over the middle. But Rybol, the inside linebacker with a great play, stops him short of the first down. They're going to go for it on fourth and three. Rybol setting the defense. Palazzi brings them out in the eye formation. Palazzi keeps. He's down to the 30. He has the first down, or so it would appear. It'll depend on the spot, but he's very close. The stake is just between the 31 and the 30, just about where they spotted the ball, now that we look at it from that angle. And it will require a measurement. Well, it appeared he was closer to that line as he went down, Yeah, I Sean. thought uh, they, that might have been a tough spot there because it looked like he had actually crossed the 30-yard line. It is going to be close with that spot. And they still have it. This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by Boston University solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and BU is prohibited. Sean, Sean McDonough with Steve King, 8.50 to play in the third quarter. BU leads 17 to 7. The handoff to Neary. Across the 25 and down to the 22. A big pickup of eight yards on first down for Al Neary, the senior fullback from St. James, New York. Now their most effective plays in this drive have been handoffs to Neary. And if you'll notice, if we get another, as we look at it here again, Neary getting the handoff, good blocking up front. And when you give Neary blocking like that, he's going to get that yardage. This time it goes to Smelly, and he's upended. Perhaps he made it back to the line of scrimmage, but once again, Kevin Smelly could not get on track. And I was going to point out before, Sean, if you'll notice, BU's linebackers, Rybold and McLaughlin, the inside linebackers, are lining up five yards deep off the line of scrimmage. And I didn't think they could get away with this with this UMass team. But they're doing a great job. Now, see how far they're set back? They certainly are. It's third and almost four yards to go for a first down. Palazzi rolling left. He's going to throw it into the end zone for Crowley. Penalty flag down. Interference will be the call against BU. Skip Jackson had the coverage. John Crowley. And that'll keep the UMass drive alive. Well, he didn't know where the ball was. He had been beaten by Crowley as Palazzi rolls to his left. Kazaroski providing the protection. He sees Crowley's open, delivers the ball. Now Jackson can't see it here. He sees Crowley coming up with his hands. He's just trying to react blindly, is forced into the interference in a big break for the Minutemen. Skip Jackson, the sophomore from Burlington, Mass, called for pass interference. John, the walk-off will come from the line of scrimmage. John Crowley... Uh, not as uh, large a receiver as a Dennis Gad boy, but they remind me uh, uh, of the, the same type of receiver in the way that they run their patterns, Sean. They run very disciplined patterns. 
They both cut very well, not exceptionally fast receivers like a Billy Brooks who was here last year with BU. But uh, with those great moves and discipline patterns, they combine that with those great hands. The 15-yard walk-off puts the ball down at the nine-yard line. UMass driving, trying to pull within three points. Trailing 17 to seven. Galvez lined up right over the center Montini. The handoff to Neri, and he had stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And that was a nice shot of Galvez at nose guard. You see there, he, he was shading the center just slightly, but he's right on top of him. A lot of teams don't put their nose guard that tight, but BU doing it and taking advantage of his quickness, and again, that allows those inside linebackers to set back, as I said, five yards deep. Tom Latka made the tackle on Al Neary. Second and goal from the nine, and Smelly can't get out of his own way here in the ball game, but to give him his proper due, he hasn't had much blocking up front, and that time it was Jim Mercer busting through. Now, Mercer's a little shaken up, but I'll tell you, that was a great defensive play. Smelly didn't have time to do anything. Mercer right in there with a great defensive play. It's going to create a third and long situation. Third and goal from almost the 10-yard line. BU 17, UMass 7. 6.35 and the clock running remaining here in the third quarter. We're at Nickerson Field on the campus of BU. Palazzi rolling right, throwing, touchdown! Jay Dowdy with a 10-yard touchdown reception and it's now a 17-13 game. Well, the blitz was on. Dave Palazzi handled it well as he rolled to the right. And Jay Tardungo coming through a lot of traffic in the middle to the right side, hauls in that touchdown. Extra point from Silvio Bonvini. It flutters through. One of the Terriers might have got a hand on it, but the kick makes it through. Silvio Bonvini adding the extra point, and it's now 17 to 14. UMass picking up right where it left off in the third quarter in previous games, outscoring their opponents 51 to 10 coming in. It's now 58 to 10. We're out of power here in the press box. The whole press box out of power. Our monitor's not operating. A little tough for us to talk about a replay of the touchdown from Palazzi to Doughty. 10-yard touchdown pass. But Dave Palazzi again with that good movement, much like Pat Mancini, a big, strong type of quarterback. He gets away from that pressure. They had the blitz on. McLaughlin was blitzing up the middle as Palazzi rolled to his right. Cardunga, or excuse me, Doughty came through heavy traffic there. There were some crossing patterns by the receivers. He came open. Palazzi rolling to his right. Appeared like, appears as if he had a lot of room and he might try to run it in, but he spotted Doughty, throws it to him, and that's a big touchdown for UMass. And of course, that extra point, as you said, Sean, appeared that it was deflected. It fluttered between the goalposts, and that was a big extra point. So cut the lead to 17 to 14. BU once led 17 to nothing. It's now a three-point football game with 6.28 remaining in period number three. Rolf Wendt will kick off for the Minutemen of the University of Massachusetts. Randy Pettis back deep for Boston University along with Darren Hunter. Numbers 22 and 21 respectively. Went steps into the ball, drives it along the ground, it bounces up, bobbled by Pettis, picked up by Hunter. Now he squirts up the middle and he has some room to run. Darren Hunter across the 40 and dragged down from behind as he gets out to the 48-yard line. What looked to be a disastrous beginning on that kickoff for BU turned out pretty well. Now this reminds me of a, a phrase I often heard growing up. Uh, <laughs> my dad used to like this phrase. He said it's like falling in a mud puddle and coming out smelling like a rose. Right. And it looked like uh, they were having a problem there. Just 
picking the ball up. All of a sudden, he picks the ball up, makes a move, and he's got about uh, 30 yards open field. First and 10 for Pat Mancini and the BU Terriers. They came out smoking offensively in the first quarter, have slowed down since. Still lead 17 to 14. Mancini hit as he threw it, and it was incomplete. Intended for Dennis Gadboy. The scoring drive for the UMass Minutemen to open up the third quarter. Very impressive. Taking up 8 minutes and 27 seconds. 16 plays, 76 yards. A 9-yard touchdown pass. The culmination of that drive. Palazzi to Dowdy. Second and 10. Vince Jackson, a late substitution into the BU lineup. He gets the play from the fullback, Bunnell as Pettis heads out. Mancini looking right, throwing as it batted around, and it's intercepted! Intercepted by the UMass Minutemen, and they'll take over in BU territory. I think that's Joe Cullen, the nose guard. I, I think Todd Rundle coming in hard from the left side, got his hands up, deflected the ball, and it came down to Cullen. They're mobbing whoever it was. It it was Joe Cullen, number 97. Mm -hmm. Todd Rundle tipped it, and Joe Cullen, the nose guard, sophomore from Weymouth, Massachusetts, made the interception. So the momentum clearly on the side of the UMass Minutemen, trailing 17 to 14, with 6.09 to play in the third period. Palazzi drops the snap again and has to cover up. Takes the loss of one back to the 46-yard line. That really hurts you when you have the momentum. Big play of the turnover on defense, and then you do that on the first offensive play. Well, that's a wasted play right there. And again, the problem with the exchange. And Brian, of course, we talked about. Maybe he's it's had not most his of those fault. problems, but uh, let's look at Pete Montini. That's Maybe right. he's leaving a little bit early. Maybe it's not Brian's fault after all. We've seen Palazzi drop a couple this afternoon as well. Second down, almost 12 yards to go. Palazzi stepped away from Mercer and Murphy, but still fell down. Fell over his own fullback, Al Neary, after he peeled away from Mercer and Murphy. Mercer makes a super play there now. They've got an inside charge going. Mercer coming down hard, and that was the uh, fake and reverse out type option with uh, Smelly being the pitch man. Malazzi never had time to pitch him the ball. Mercer right there in his face as he reversed out. So after the turnover, the Minutemen backing up. They lose another yard on that play. It's now third down and 13 from the BU 48. 17-14, BU leads UMass. Palazzi under pressure from Murphy, taken down by Murphy. Back at the 44-yard line. Kevin Murphy, the defensive tackle, a senior, 6'2", 240 pounds from Syracuse, New York, making the big play. Kevin Murphy is just a great defensive lineman. Jim Reed told me this week, he said, we have a lot of respect for Kevin Murphy. There you can see why. Third sack of the afternoon for the Boston University Terriers. Yavis on the punt. He's punted three times for an average of 37.6. It's a high, booming kick from Dimitri Yavis. Seals lets it go. It's bouncing down inside the five, and they couldn't save it. George Corellis was down there trying to keep it in the field of play, but he couldn't save it. Yavis very close to dumping it inside the five again, and that was a 56-yard punt by Dimitri Yavis. And that's a shame. Uh, you know, Corellis should have just swatted that ball back in the, in the uh, field of play. Instead, he tried to down it on the one. His momentum carries it into the end zone. So the BU defense responds after the turnover by the offense. Pat Mancini and company back on the field with a 17-14 lead, down to 4.08 to play in the third quarter. The handoff goes to Vince Jackson, and he's tripped up after a short gain. Vito Perron, number 44, made the tackle. Call it a gain of three, second and seven for the BU Terriers. I'd imagine with the power out here in the press box, Steve, that the headsets for the coaching staff's also not working. As I look down at the sideline, I don't see anybody with a headset on on either side of the field. And we are told now that that is true. A 
Again, it's Vince Jackson on the carry. He's close to a first down, brought down at the 29-yard line. Well, it's interesting, Sean. Uh, you think about it, now it's a battle of the coaches on the sidelines. They don't have the help from the people upstairs. So, uh, uh, battle of the minds down on the playing field, not just in the press box. Third down, one yard to go for a Terrier first down. Manel and Jackson, the backfield behind Mancini. Jackson stumbled and never made it to the 30-yard line. So it's another punting situation for the Boston University Terriers and Steve Jones, the sophomore, trots back onto the field. Jones has punted three times, his average 33.7 yards per kick. John Crowley back deep to receive the punt. Clock ticking down to two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. High snap. Jones takes it down, gets the kick off. It's wobbling across the 40, taking a UMass bounce back across the 40, and it's down by Mercer. Or check that. It's down by Tim Bunnell at the 41-yard line. So good field position again for the UMass Minutemen, a 30-yard kick by Steve Jones. First and ten for the Minutemen. Dave Palazzi has been at quarterback since the first quarter. Tim Bryant started at quarterback but left after failing to pick up a first down. BU at one point led 17 to nothing. The flare out to Smelly, and he's going to lose yardage. Again, it was the Terriers reading that play beautifully, and Tom Ladka busted through to help force the play. Arnie Galvez also in there. Well, Kevin Smelly really having his problems today, getting on track. They're right on top of him. Uh, Terriers doing a great job of reading that screen. A loss on the play of six yards in second and 16 from the 36 of UMass. The back shift, Smelly and Neary in the backfield behind Palazzi, Crowley in motion. The handoff goes to Smelly, flags are down. Smelly picks up about four yards as he makes his way to the 40-yard line. Let's check out the penalty. I think that's two men in motion at the same time against UMass. There was a lot of motion taking place by the minute men. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Terriers declined the penalty with a third down at 13 facing the minute men of UMass. Penalty is indeed refused. I would imagine this is a very big play in the football game, Steve. This is two possessions in a row that the UMass offense has been given the ball in excellent field position. They backed up after the interception by Cullen, and they've backed up again on this possession. Third and 13, Smelly in motion. Palazzi to throw. Now he's going to run. Has a long way to run to get the first down. He won't get there. He was tripped up by Keith McLaughlin. And never made it to the first down marker. As a matter of fact, he came up about five yards short at the 46. And give the Terrier defensive line credit. They flushed him out. And once he broke that line of scrimmage, the secondary and linebackers reacting well, stopping him short of the first down. Dimitri Yavis had his longest punt of the season on his last effort moments ago, a 56-yarder. That's raised his average for this afternoon up to 42 and a half yards on four kicks. Nearly has it blocked, but gets it off. Seals is going to field it back at the 10, and he's going to get dropped right there. Good coverage downfield by the UMass Minutemen. George Corellis again in on the stop number 30 for UMass. Well, there was good coverage on that punt. Mark Seals felt he had to field it. If he didn't, it probably would have been another situation where the ball was down around the five or maybe inside the five. So a good job, I think, by Mark Seals catching that football. At least he prevented a situation where they downed it inside the five. A 45-yard punt for Dimitri Yavis. Down to the final seconds now of the third quarter. 20 seconds left to play. BU 17, UMass 14. 
Mancini hands it off. And it's a short gain of about two yards. Randy Pettis on the carry. John McEwen, inside linebacker number 35, made the stop. And that's the final play of the third quarter. Boston University at the end of three quarters of play leads the University of Massachusetts by a score of 17 to 14 and will return to Dickerson Field for fourth quarter action right after we pause for this on Messi. I'm Tom Watson. When I'm not playing golf, I like to read about it. And for my money, there's nothing better than Golf Digest. Golf Digest covers every angle of the game thoroughly. And now, you can get Golf Digest. Here's how. Call toll-free 800-453-8500 for a year of Golf Digest, only $12.77, 46% off the newsstand price, and you'll receive as a bonus tips from the tour free. Call 800-453-8500 now. Hi, I'm Joe Sambito. I'm inviting you to join me along with Sammy Stewart, Marty Barrett, and Jim Rice for a great time this winter. We're going to be aboard the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line's Song of America for the cruise of a lifetime. This special trip includes exclusive parties, photo and autograph sessions, and a softball game with your favorite Red Sox players. Join us from January 18th through 25th and start off your new year right. Call Classic Tours today at 1-800-225-5432. Fourth quarter set to begin here at Nickerson Field. Sean McDonough along with Steve King. Hope you're enjoying Yankee Conference football this afternoon on Nesson. BU leads UMass by a score of 17 to 14 with one quarter to play. But things have turned in favor of the UMass Minutemen. BU with just 11 yards in total offense in that third quarter, but they hardly had the ball. UMass had the possession almost throughout, didn't do much with it. Put only one touchdown on the board, but right back in the game, trailing by three. Mancini pitches it out to Vince Jackson. Running right, he's across the 15 and dropped at the 16-yard line. Scott Brown, the strong safety, came up to make the tackle. Third down and four for Boston University. The Terriers at their own 16. Bunnell, the lone running back behind Mancini. Three wideouts into the game. Quick pass, it's complete, and it's a first down for Boston University. Mark Ferrara made the catch. We really haven't seen much of the passing game that was successful for BU in the first quarter and really throughout the first half. And that's so true. They've got to get back to that to get the ball moving. Uh, UMass has really enjoyed field position here in the second half, all of the third quarter. So you're right, Sean. They've got to start passing the ball, open things up again. It's a first down for BU. 14 minutes remaining in the final period. Mancini tosses it out again to Jackson. Again, nowhere to run. Rundle smothers them. They're diving into the pile as if the ball came free. UMass thinks they've recovered a fumble, and they have. The Minutemen take it over at the BU 22-yard line. Jackson fumbled the football, and off the bottom of the pile comes Scott Brown, number 24, with the fumble recovery. The senior from Watertown, Mass. Now, th this is a big play defensively. They do a good job. They string the play out, and everyone converges up front on the play. There's a big pile up, and Scott Brown comes up with what may be the biggest turnover of the ball game. Scott Brown with the fumble recovery. Ball spotted just outside the 23-yard line. That's where Dave Palazzi and his offense takes over first and 10. Neary into the line, crashing over the 20 and down to the 18. One thing I've, I've noticed about UMass in previous games is that their offensive line seems to get stronger as the game wears on. So we'll watch closely here and see what happens, but uh, it's been their history that their offensive line has continued to get better as the game wears on. Good first down pickle with six yards for Al Neary at second and four. Crowley in motion, the toss to Smelly. Smelly across the 15, dragged down by Seals as he got close to a first down. 
He needed to reach the 14. We've talked about Vince Jackson's great cutting ability. There, Smelly shows the type of moves he has, cutting up inside of Jim Mercer. Mercer diving, just able to trip him up, but not before he gets very, very close to the first down. It's third and inches for UMass, operating from the right hash mark at the 14-yard line of BU. 12.45 to play fourth quarter. The handoff to Neary, I don't think he got there. If anything, he might have lost a couple of inches. Again, it will depend on the spot, but it did not seem as though he made it back to the line of scrimmage. And he won't. It's fourth down. A field goal would tie the game. What will Jim Reed do with 12 and a half minutes to play? Trailing by three. He's well, getting going off to go the, for it. I noticed getting off the bottom of that pile, Jack Ribel, the inside linebacker, He's the signal caller today. Biggest play of the football game right here. Fourth and inches. They toss it to Smelly. He has the first down. He's going into the end zone. Touchdown, Kevin Smelly. We haven't heard much from him all afternoon, but he came through on the biggest play of the afternoon. Kevin Smelly, a 14-yard touchdown run. And UMass, for the first time this afternoon, has the lead. It's now 20 to 17 with the extra point upcoming. The Minutemen taking advantage of the turnover. A fourth in inches. They toss the ball to Smelly to his right. He makes a great cut. Gets to the outside. Beats Mark Seals. Just gets inside that corner post for the touchdown and the go-ahead touchdown, I might add. Second touchdown of the afternoon for Kevin Smelly. Silvio Bonvini with the extra point attempt. His last one just barely made it through. This one is booted strongly through, but why? It was a strong kick by Bonvini, but why? And it's now 20 to 17, and Silvio Bonvini, after making 33 in a row to set a UMass record, has missed two extra points in two weeks and nearly missed two here this afternoon. Okay, our monitors are back up here. We're going to take another look at that touchdown. Here's Smelly to his right. You see the cut right there? Uses his blocker to the outside, turns on the speed. Now Mark Seals is going to try to come over and knock him out of bounds. But Smelly, great strength, just gets inside that corner post. That was really close, but picks up a touchdown and a big touchdown for UMass at this point in the game. Watch it, Neary right there with the block. Smelly cutting up inside, really turning it on. It's a foot race. Look at him get that foot across the goal line. Steve, I think that's a, a very courageous call. It's fourth down in inches, and yet they run the toss uh, with the chance. You always take the chance that somebody for BU could bust through and drop him behind the line of scrimmage. But obviously, they thought that BU would be stacked up in the middle, and they took the risk, rolled the dice, and won. Well, you know, that reflects Jim Reed's personality, Sean. That's the type of guy Jim Reed is. He has a lot of faith in his ball players, and he's not afraid to make calls like that. On fourth and one, the 14-yard touchdown run for Smelly, but the big extra point missed by Bonvini, and now a field goal would tie the game for the BU Terriers, who haven't done much since, really, the first quarter. Went to kick it off. Again, he drives it along the ground. They let it roll through to Darren Hunter. Hunter, across the 30, bounces off one tackle and is stopped at the 33-yard line by Dave McIntosh, number 37. Just four plays on that drive after the fumble recovery, 24 yards the distance, a minute and 48 the time, and the touchdown coming on the 14-yard run by Smelly. Steve, BU got away from what was successful for them in the first half, but then again, they haven't had the ball much in the second half, and when they have had it, it's been in pretty poor field position. Well, that's true, but uh, to a, a, a certain degree, I feel like they went inside a shell they got away from the thing that, that really got them the big lead, and that's the passing game. They exploited that zone defense, and they came out in the second half. They tried to run the ball, and UMass has done a good job. And of course, as you say, field position has really been the key. There Jim we look Tandler. at the injured. Excuse me. No, that's all right. Jim Tandler is the man injured for the University of Massachusetts, wearing number 99. He's a sophomore from Randolph. Suffered a knee injury in last year's season opener against Morgan State and did not play in the final 10 games. So they're hoping it's not the same thing this time for Chandler. But it does appear to be a leg injury as they carry him off.
Taylor was also the punter at UMass and set a UMass record in 1984 with a 74-yard punt against the Northeastern Huskies. Came to UMass as a quarterback. Certainly a beautiful afternoon. Got a little exercise in out on the Charles. And it's been a heck of a football game here on homecoming day at Nickerson Field. The Boston University Terriers at one time led 17 to nothing. But the UMass Minutemen have come back to score 20 unanswered points. And they've taken a three-point lead with 11.56 remaining in the fourth quarter. Only 12 plays on offense in this half for BU. Mancini, the screen. He has some blockers out in front of him, does Vince Jackson. He's across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Very close to a first down, about a yard short is Vince Jackson, and that was a well-executed play by BU. This is very similar to the play we saw last week at Kingston, Rhode Island, that Vince Jackson turned into a touchdown. Mancini turns, they've set it up here. There you see John Tim, number 70, the lead blocker. He's got a lot of room. He picks up a block from Tim, and Bertucci comes over and makes a tackle just short of the first down. Second and one from the 42. Hand off to the fullback, Bunnell. And I don't think he got there. Needed to get right to the 43-yard line, and he didn't go anywhere. No gain on the play. Third and one. <laughs> Pat Mancini threw 21 times in the first half, has thrown only three times here in the second half. He's 16 for 24 in the ball game. Two touchdown passes and 181 yards in completions. Again, it's into the middle of the line. And let's see if they have it. It's going to be very close. Well, that was just a quarterback sneak. Mancini taking advantage of his center and guards. They fired out well, and I think he got the first down. clock is going to stop for a measurement. From where they've spotted the football, I think Steve Stetson has reason for concern. You can read the You're expression right. on his uh, face. Uh, it's going to be very, very close. Well, maybe we can see it again. I really felt that Mancini had penetrated far enough to pick up the first down from our vantage point. But it looks much different now that they've spotted the ball. And he's short by a couple of inches. Steve Stetson has a decision to make. His team trails by three. 10.39 to play. Here it is once again. Okay, from the end zone, watch him. He's going to try to surge forward. John McEwen comes up, really sticks him. Now right there, the guard, you see Bingston. I may have confused Bingston for Mancini. John McEwen did a nice job of stepping up there and really uh, putting a stop to Mancini. Steve Jones, the punter, had started onto the field. Steve Stetson called him back. The crowd certainly wants him to go for it. And they will. Fourth and inches. Look for a long count here. Trying to draw someone off sides. Mancini squirts forward, appeared to pick up the first down. Almost looked like he dropped the snap well, as was, he came away from center. I was going to say, did. I think he dropped the ball. I believe he dropped the ball, and it may have been recovered by UMass. It has been. It was recovered by UMass. Mancini would have had the first down from where they spot the ball at the 44, but he didn't take it with him. He went down right away, Sean. It appeared that uh, he never had control of the football. Bad exchange by BU this time. UMass having their problems. But this is a big one. Let's take a close look here. Now watch, he goes down immediately. See, he looks down. He's trying to pick that ball up. A big pile. We couldn't see who made the recovery. Flag down on the first play from scrimmage for UMass. The Minutemen leading now, 20 to 17. 10 21 remaining, and the clock stopped here in the fourth quarter for the penalty flag. Holding will be the call against the UMass Minutemen. Well, the Terriers having a tough time getting going here in the second half. Appeared they had a somewhat of a drive going there, the big fourth down play. I really didn't expect them to snap the ball. I, I thought that it was a ploy by Steve Stetson to try to draw UMass off sides, but he was in fact going for it. A big turnover, and now UMass with a holding call right away. That's a break for the Terriers. Ball 
spotted back at the 47. The headset should be functioning now on the sideline because we have power back here in the press box. Halazi throws out to Dowdy. Short gain as he crosses back over midfield and gets to the 48. Not to question Steve Stetson or to second guess his motives there, but plenty of time to play. 10-30. Uh, if you don't make it and give the ball back to UMass inside your own field position, you're giving them an excellent opportunity to score down and maybe score a touchdown that could put the game away if they do drive down. If you punt the ball, put your defense on the field, you might have a chance to get it back in good field position with plenty of time to play. It's a tough call either way, but I thought it was a little early uh, to be going for it and gambling in his own territory with more than ten and a half minutes remaining. Palazzi rolling right, throwing, almost intercepted by Mark Seals. John Crowley did an excellent job to get a hand in there and break it up as it looked like Seals was going to pick it off. And you got that one right, uh, Sean. Crowley doing a nice job here preventing the interception. Now watch, there's a pass on the run. Crowley is open, but he doesn't see Mark Seals coming in from his cornerback position. He goes high, and Crowley just tipped the ball from behind. Third down, 14 yards to go for UMass first down. They're at the BU 48 with just under 10 minutes to play. Palazzi over the middle, complete to Crowley. And he appears to have a first down as Seals makes the tackle at the 34-yard line. It'll be very close. And they're going to stop the clock and measure. I think he has it from where they've spotted the ball. All right, Dave Palazzi rifling the ball in. Crowley running upfield and slanting in over the linebacker, McLaughlin and Seals doesn't have time to react. Great throw, nice catch. And a first down for the Minutemen. Keeping the drive alive, a big third down and 14 completion. Palazzi to Crowley. Jim Reed's Minutemen lead by a score of 20 to 17. Crowley with four catches for 55 yards. We're down to 9.44 to play in the fourth quarter. Been almost two entirely different football games. BU dominating the first half. UMass has controlled the play here in the second half. Neary wrapped up after a short gain. Did a good job to get back to the line of scrimmage as Dennis Carson got in and made the stop. It's interesting, uh, Sean. Uh, UMass has gotten themselves in a lot of third and long situations in the second half. I. Uh, I don't know what the exact statistics are on those third down conversions, but they have converted several of those third down situations. Gain of two on first down for Neary. Second and eight, the handoff to Smelly. Got stopped in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Jack Reibold busting through. He was in on the play. It's a loss of one. There's that, third and nine. there's that quickness again by the Terrier defense. The quick penetration. Getting something happening in the backfield early. Preventing Smelly from getting started. Dowdy and Trafari receivers split out to the right. Mike Trafari, number 15, has come in. And he comes in motion. Alazi looking for Trafari. Has Trafari. And he's brought down at the 13-yard line. They've gone to that play time and time again on third down in a must-yardage situation. Slant across the middle. Find the man, Mike Trafari, with the catch. Well, this is interesting. They're running an unbalanced to the right. Smelly comes out of the backfield to the left to clear the linebacker. And then Trafari comes all the way from the wide side of the field into that open seam. Palazzi with a good pass. Mike Trafari with the catch. Keeping the drive alive, and they're down in scoring territory at the 14. Palazzi, the option, pitches it to Smelly. Smelly wrapped up by Seals, but not before he got down to the six. All right, someone has some difficulty coming off their block onto Palazzi, but the real problem, of course, was by the time he got there to, to corner Palazzi, Smelly was open. There was nobody on the pitch man. There you see it. Palazzi draws his man. Smelly's got a lot of room, and uh, they're threatening again. And they're going to call a timeout. 
Malazzi uses his first time out of the second half with 7.19 to play here in the fourth quarter. It's UMass 20 and BU 17. If you're just joining us, BU played a nearly flawless first quarter, went off to a 17 and nothing lead in the first half. UMass came back with a touchdown by Kevin Smelly to make it 17 to seven at halftime. But it's been two touchdowns for UMass unanswered by the Terriers here in the second half. One missed extra point by Silvio Bonvini. 20 to 17 is the score. 7-19 and the clock stopped for the timeout remaining. Going back to the last play briefly. The Terriers have done a good job stopping the option today for the most part. Early in the game we saw they didn't have a man on Kevin Smelly on the pitch. This time the same situation late in the ball game and that was a costly play. We remind you again our Yankee Conference football game next week. BU at UConn. That's next Saturday Yankee Conference football live at 1 o'clock. The Boston University Terriers and the Yukon Huskies. The Terriers hoping to go to stores with a 3 and 2 Yankee Conference record, but right now they find themselves trailing 20 to 17 with 719 to play. Second and 2 for Dave Palazzi in the Minutemen. The handoff to Neary. He appears to have the first down as he crashes his way across the 4-yard line. to stop the clock and measure again. I don't know what the Yankee Conference record is for measurements in a football game, but we might have uh, achieved that here this afternoon. Well, a big series uh, right here with the goal-to-goal -goal situation. If the Terriers can force them to kick a field goal, uh, the tie and possibly, of course, uh, a two-point conversion and send them ahead. They give up a touchdown, then they've got to score twice. So the real problems, if they can't stop UMass, there you see, just inches short of the first down. Third and inches upcoming at the four-yard line of Boston University. UMass 20, VU 17, 7.14 to play, and now the clock winds up as the chains make their way back to the sidelines. Palazzi dives forward and has the first down. Now that's a good call. They take advantage of that size difference. Up front and center in the two guards. UMass with a distinct advantage. Palazzi just taking off behind his center and two guards. Picks up the first down. Crowd on the near side coming to its feet. Trying to spur on the BU defense. The Terriers with their backs to the wall here. Trailing by three. 6.45 to play. Jay Nisbet in motion. Palazzi on the option. Gives it out to Smelly. He's going to walk into the end zone. Third touchdown of the afternoon for Kevin Smelly. And it's a 26-17 UMass lead. Now this is a good read by Dave Palazzi. He could have probably scored himself, but he recognized there was no one on the corner, no one to take Smelly. And before anyone even got close to him, he pitches the ball to Smelly. Let's take another look right down the line. Now right there, Dave Palazzi recognizes, hey, there's no one that can catch Smelly. Even though I might be able to score, Kevin Smelly's the man. Tosses the ball immediately, untouched into the end zone. It's been a shaky afternoon on extra points for Silvio Bonvini. He's missed one and had another one deflected that went through. That one is good. And it's 27 to 17 now in favor of the University of Massachusetts Minutemen. What a turnaround. This is, uh, we've, I, you know, I, I've seen it so many times before, Sean. I think you've seen it watching the games. This UMass team just never gives up. At URI two weeks ago, they were behind 17 to nothing. At the end of the first quarter, they tie it up 17 to seven. They finally win the ball game 31 to 17. Today, after a 17 to nothing deficit, they're ahead 27 to 17 with six and a half minutes to go. One, two, three, and their cheerleaders four, are going to get some more on the muscles. Oh, boy, what a cop-out that is. 
Steve? <laughs> I never get to do push-ups that way. <laughs> what a cop-out. Sean McDonough with Steve King, our producer-director, Ed Placey at the controls. Hope you're enjoying Yankee Conference football this afternoon. 27-17. UMass trying to go to 4-1 and one and remain at the top of the Yankee Conference with a victory this afternoon. A victory would put the minute men at 6-1 overall. With Holy Cross next on the agenda, that'll be a tough one for the Minutemen at Worcester next week. As we told you, BU's at Connecticut next week. Darren Hunter bobbles the kickoff, has to retreat back to his 15. Spins away, gets back across the 20, and makes a little bit out of nothing as he got back to the 23-yard line. Wentz kickoffs have been effective for the most part as he's squibbed them down the field. All right, here's a good view, the squib kick right there. He can't get the handle on it. Trying to pick it up, finally gets it, but by this time, they're swarming all around him. And Steve Stetson had to uh, get, be a little excited on that one. First and 10 for Pat Mancini and the Terriers. They have not put any points on the board here in the second half. Mancini going to the air, throwing incomplete intended for Mark Ferrara. The scoring drive for the University of Massachusetts Minutemen. The drive covered 44 yards. It took 10 plays. Eight up, three minutes and 49 seconds on the clock. A touchdown, a three-yard run by Kevin Smelly, his third touchdown of the afternoon. He hasn't covered much ground this afternoon, but he's been able to get the Minutemen into the end zone when they've needed it. Just like his team, uh, they seem to get it done when they have to. BU, just 29 yards in total offense in the second half. After moving almost at will in the beginning of the football game. Mancini dumps it off to Andy Wise, the tight end. He has a first down. He's out across the 40-yard line. Brought down at the 41-yard line. John McEwen and Bob Shellmeyer made the tackle. All right, they're going to they're gonna set up shop here with great field position. They finally get out of the hole. Wise coming across there at the bottom of your screen. He's wide open. The linebackers have taken deep drops. McEwen pursuing there along with Brown. They haul him down, but you can see he's going to get up to the 42-yard line. The Terriers are back in business. That was a big play for them. They trail by 10, six minutes to play, fourth quarter. Why is the tight end in motion? Mancini rolling right, throwing right, incomplete. Intended for Steve Macri, number 18. Mancini on the run again. Todd Rundle applying the pressure, forcing Mancini out of the pocket. David Snowball, the backup quarterback, signaling in the play. And apparently it meets with the approval of Steve Stetson, who nods his head. Steve's a Dartmouth graduate, class of 73, was an all Ivy League quarterback in 1972, his senior year, first team. Second down, 10. Wise again in motion. Mancini again rolls right. Goes over the middle to Wise, incomplete. There was some contact there, but no call. Ray Jackson on the coverage. Ray Jackson defending, doing a nice job. Now, Wise slowed up. I believe if he had continued to run under this football, he could have had a reception. Now, see right there, he stops and tries to go up for it. The ball is overthrown at that point. If he hadn't jumped, Sean, and continued to run and stretch out for it, I believe that would have been a completion. And maybe a big gain as he had a lot of running room ahead of him. Instead, it's third down and 10. The Terriers desperately needing a first down with 5.48 to play. BU trails UMass by 10, 27 to 17. Heavy rush, Mancini going over the middle, underthrown, intended again for Wise. And it's a fourth and 10. Vito Perron with the pressure this time, and he had Wise open, but by the time he spotted him, Bob Schellmeyer, the safety, came over, got the coverage. Here we see him rolling to his left. Perone on the blitz, up the middle. Now he's throwing off his heels, but it's too late. Wise was open earlier. Ball underthrown. Fourth and 10, and Steve Stetson and the Terriers have opted to go for it. Trailing by 10 with 5.43 to play. Wise again comes in motion. Mancini has time. Throws, and it almost intercepted. Knocked out, intended for Ferrara. 
And on downs, the UMass Minutemen will take over. Jim Bertucci made the big play, number 36 for UMass, knocking it away from Ferrara. And that was actually better than an interception because now they get the ball back at the 38 yard, the 41 yard line. Right All right, now. let's take a look. He wants Ferrara. Bertucci stretching out, knocking the ball down. And Jim Bertucci picking up where he left off last week against the University of Maine, coming up with a big play at the right time. We have some scores to pass along of other Yankee Conference football games. Richmond, with six minutes left in the fourth quarter, leads URI by a score of 28 to nothing. The Spiders on the verge of going three and three in the conference. UConn has defeated Maine by a score of 35 to 19. That makes Connecticut two and one in Yankee Conference play. Maine one and three. Delaware has come back to take a 21-17 lead over Lehigh with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. That is a non-conference game, of course. UMass staying on the ground. Al Neary up the middle for about a six-yard gain as he made it down to the 35. Well, it's gut check time up the middle for the Terriers. UMass is going to come at them with, from tackle to tackle with Al Neary. They've got to get that ball back right away to have a chance. Look for them to uh, try to hold a ball carrier up. Another man come in and try to strip that ball away. Much of this large homecoming day crowd has begun to file out, thinking that it's a lost cause for the Terriers. It's 27-17 UMass with five minutes to play. Run, run! Smelly has a first down and more as he makes it down to the 28-yard line. And you said it, Steve, and it certainly appears to be true that the UMass offensive line has taken control of the football game as the game has worn on. Well, they're getting some movement up front. Kevin Smelly running to his left towards the tackle hole. Saw a hole back over the middle, made a nice cut and picks up a first down and things are looking bleak for the Terriers. Looks like Jim Reed on his watch was timing the amount of time the uh, Minutemen were spending in the huddle, making sure that. they were using up the proper amount of seconds. Want to kill as much time off the clock as they can. The pitch to Smelly. And he's hit hard by Keith McLaughlin, but stayed in bounds. The tackle made at the 26 yard line after a gain of about two. You're mentioning that's interesting, Sean. We saw them playing Northeastern several weeks ago. He was doing the same thing, only he miscalculated. He thought he had enough time to run the clock out. They were dropping on the football rather than going for a score. Northeastern got the ball back and came very close to getting downfield in position for a score late in the ball game. Less than four minutes remaining now. Clock ticking down to three minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter and running. UMass leads by 10. They have the ball in BU territory. Smelly stopped at the 23-yard line. They're in the field goal range of Silvio Bonvini. Another field goal would give them a 13-point lead and make the comeback task even that much more difficult for Boston University. Well, now we're in four-down territory. Uh, I wouldn't look for Jim Reed to attempt a field goal. If it is fourth down, I think he will go for it. Wouldn't want to risk having it blocked at this stage exactly. already in a comfortable position with a 10-point lead. Malazzi's going to throw, and he completes it. Ken Gerard made the reception, and he's down inside the 15-yard line, has a first down at the 13. First reception of the afternoon for number 87, Kenny Gerard. Again, there's that style of Jim Reed. He lets his team put the ball in the air on a situation where if it's picked off, all of a sudden the Terriers could uh, turn the ball game around. But showing a lot of faith in the ability of his ball players, calls a pass, Palazzi, a nice throw to Gerard. 2.40, the time remaining, the clock running. Malazzi hands it off inside to Al Neary. He's had a lot of work this afternoon. Timeout called now on the field by Boston University. That's the first timeout taken by the Terriers in the half. They have two remaining. Well, it appears that, that BU just came out in the second half. They lost their momentum completely. Couldn't really put anything together. They had some tough breaks, some turnovers that hurt them. And uh, let's give that UMass 
defense credit and especially their coaches obviously they made some adjustments at halftime that have helped them stop the terriers uh, in the, in the uh, passing department you know i i really feel sean that uh steve stetson and uh his coaches got away from the thing that uh really helped them jump out that 17 to nothing lead the passing game when they did come back to it umass appears to have uh, made nice adjustments and they just they've shut the terriers down here in the second half a complete reversal of the first half it would appear also steve that dave palazzi is back as the number one quarterback he came off the bench 13 and 20 167 yards he got them into the end zone when Tim Bryant could not this afternoon. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I mentioned that early in the ball game against Delaware, they started Dave Pelosi after he came back from that shoulder injury. He didn't get the job done. Tim Bryant came back, won his job back. Now he can't move them today, as you say. And uh, Dave Pelosi looks like he's back under control of that offense. Second and eight from the 11. Pelosi pitches it out to Smelly. And he did what he did not want to do, and that is go out of bounds. Inside the 10-yard line at about the 7, Kevin Smelly ridden out of bounds. Good job by Palazzi on that play, Steve. He really held the ball long enough to attract the attention. You know, gave it, Smelly some it work. certainly was. Uh, you look at Dave Palazzi on that play, and you think, you know, there, he's not going to risk any kind of fumble. You wouldn't think he'd toss the football, but he has so much confidence in his ability. At the last minute, he pitched the ball to Smelly. Third down, about two yards to go for a first down for UMass. They're at the six-yard line of BU, leading by 10 with 2.19 to play. Smelly didn't get the first down. He got to the five-yard line. It'll be fourth down at about one. And the BU coaches want a timeout. Their team not seeing them now. They stop the clock. Unfortunately for them, right now, their team's number two, not number one. <laughs> Trailing by ten points. Steve Stetson huddling with his defense. Fourth and one. Of course, they have to stop them on this play if there's any chance at all remaining for Boston University. Well, he realizes if UMass scores here, it's the final blow that'll send them down to defeat. Dave Palazzi over checking with Jim Reed. Now at this point, it's they've got a fourth and one, Sean, a long one yard. You know, you you with this UMass team, you don't know what they're uh, what they're going to do. You don't know whether to expect Neary up the middle, uh, the option, Smelly on the toss, or a play action and a pass. It's just there's no telling what this UMass team will do. They really keep you off balance. BU at one point led 17 to nothing. It is now UMass 27, BU 17, 204 remaining in the fourth quarter. And a fourth and one facing the Minutemen at the five yard line. They got the wishbone. Palazzi is going to keep it. He has the first down, run out of bounds at about the one yard line, and that'll be the final nail in the coffin for the UMass Minutemen, as they'll have it for as many more downs as they'd like to keep it. Able to run up the clock, BU only with one timeout remaining. There's a good shot of McLaughlin. What a competitor. I'll tell you, he's had a great game today. He and Jack Ryan Reibold, the inside linebackers for the Terriers. And uh, as I said, they're playing today with bad shoulders, he and Reibold. First and goal from just outside the one. Smelly scores his fourth touchdown of the afternoon. Kevin Smelly up and over. It's now 33 to 17, UMass. Well, the leap again over the big pile up front. Kevin Smelly uh, doing an impression of Marcus Allen. Those big strides there. There it is. Boom. He takes off like a rocket. And that'll do it for the Minutemen. Minutemen on the verge of being 6-1 overall, 4-1 in the Yankee Conference. 
Silvio Bonvini to attempt the extra point. And the sophomore from Caldwell, New Jersey, drives it through. It's a 34-17 football game. With a minute and 56 seconds left to play. Kevin Smelly with four touchdowns today for the UMass Minutemen. Well, he's a happy young man. And for the most part, the Terriers have done a good job against Kevin Smelly today, but uh, down the stretch, Kevin Smelly's came up with some big plays, and of course, down by the goal line, the big touchdowns with that great leaping ability. Kevin Smelly came in with five touchdowns on the season, so he nearly doubled that this afternoon. Now has nine for the year, and he's the leading scorer on the UMass team. BU this half, 52 yards of total offense as opposed to 169 for the Minutemen, and the Minutemen have outscored the Terriers 27 to nothing here in the second half. That pretty well tells the tale. It's hard for me to believe how much different the football game was from half number one to half number two. I would have never believed it. I really didn't think UMass could mount a comeback like this against uh, the Terriers. They seem to have things well in control in the first half. Wentz kick fallen on at the 37-yard line by Mike Flynn. One last chance for the Terriers here to get some points on the board. They have one timeout. They have a minute and 54. They trail by 17. Well, I wonder uh, now if they wish they'd kept those white pants on at <laughs> halftime. <laughs> they were outscored 27 to nothing in the red pants. We said it at the half. Uh, they had things well under control. Ahead 17 to 7. May, maybe it made the Minutemen see red. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly they saw red and they ran right through the red too. From the 37, Pat Mancini still at quarterback. He comes out throwing as expected. Going deep over the middle. Complete to Andy Wise, the tight end at the 41 of UMass. The clock will stop as they move the chains. The Terriers hurrying up. Looking down, Dennis Gadboy not out there on the field, and we haven't really seen him in the second half. You wonder if he might have injured himself. He did take that hit in the ribs that we saw in the first half. Right. Mancini dumps it off. Wise again on the reception. He's down to the 34. Clock showing a minute and 25 seconds. Gain of seven. Second and three. It's 34-17, UMass leading. Down to a minute and 15 remaining in the fourth quarter. Mancini likes the tight end wise. That time it's incomplete. Rundle on the coverage along with George Corellis. Brings up a third down and three. Andy Wise, the most effective pass receiver for the Terriers here in the second half. Of course, uh, Ferreira and Gadboy, between them, had 11 receptions in that first half. And Kevin Smelly deserves congratulations. A sophomore from Mississauga, Ontario. Four touchdowns this afternoon. Not a lot of yardage, but four touchdowns. Mancini dumps it off to Ferrara. He has the first down across the third. Haven't heard much from Ferrara after he had five receptions in the first half. There's a good shot of Dave Blas. You can see he has those that rib protector on that quarterbacks wear today. All the quarterbacks now wearing the black jackets are rib protectors like that. That catch for Ferrara, the second of the half, is seventh of the afternoon. First and ten from the 28 with a minute six to play. Mancini looking again for Ferrara, has him. He's out at the 22, a gain of six. They might score another touchdown, but this isn't going to get them back into the football game. But, of course, their chance of getting back is very slim to begin with. Down 17 with a minute one to play. Well, UMass 
dropping back into that zone. They're going to allow them to complete that short pass. They just want to slow the Terriers up at this point. Mancini throwing for Pettis did not connect. Third and four from the 22 with 57 seconds to play. Don't forget tonight here on Nesson, it's live Hockey East action. Lowell against UNH. That game coming to you from Snively Arena at 7.30 this evening. I'm going to have to hurry. Get in the car and let's get on the highway up to Durham. <laughs> Think he's going to throw here, Steve? You got $100? <laughs> Fake the handoff. Don't even know why they bother. Over the middle Ooh. it goes. Ferrara could not come up with it. And he took a pretty good pop at the eight-yard line as he went after it. Dave McIntosh on the coverage, number 37. Okay, that's, this is a dangerous type of pass. McIntosh has time to really zero in on the receiver. Ferrara really stretching out, trying to catch the football. He's in that vulnerable position. McIntosh really coming up and breaking that play up with a solid hit. But uh, fortunately, Ferreira not injured. And it's fourth down and four. From the 22, Mancini drops back. Dumps it off to Pettis. He has the first down, looking to get out of bounds, and he does. Down at the 11-yard line, Randy Pettis keeps the Terriers on the move. With 42 seconds left to play, it's UMass 34 and Boston University 17. Dave Palazzi, back as starting quarterback. 15 for 23 this afternoon was Palazzi, 167 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Mancini loops it out to Ferrara, complete out of bounds at the sixth. The Terriers continue to inch their way toward the goal line. Steve, while we have a moment, I want to say it's been a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon, and Ken Bell will be back with you next week down at UConn. We, of course, want to thank the sports information people from both schools, Howard Davis and UMass, Ed Carpenter, who always does a great job here at VU, the coaching staffs of both schools. We thank them for their cooperation, and, of course, Eric Eisendrath here in the booth doing a great job on the stats for us. We appreciate it. Mancini lobbing it into the corner. Touchdown, Steve Macri. A six-yard touchdown reception from Pat Mancini. Third touchdown throw of the afternoon for Mancini. But it's too little too late for the Terriers. They trail 34-23, and they'll go for the two points here. All right, this won't do it. You're absolutely right. But it still feels good to score a touchdown. And Steve Macri, wide open, runs a good route. Has a lot of room in the corner. Nice pass by Pat Mancini. And he accepted the congratulations of a Providence College Lady Fryer field hockey player over there after making the touchdown reception. BU going for two. I'm sure we'll see the onside kick after this. Mancini rolling right, throwing, and they get the two. Ferrara on the two-point conversion. He's caught two touchdown passes and now a two-point conversion. And it's 34-25 with 34 seconds left to play. So it still would take two scores for BU to pull this thing out. They have one timeout remaining, 34 seconds left to go. Mancini, three touchdown passes on the afternoon. All right, here's the conversion pass to Ferrara. Ferrara having a big day reception-wise. Mancini really lays it in there nicely right in the front corner of the end zone. Ferreira goes down, uses uh, both hands to cradle that football, make sure he's gonna catch it. And uh, I'm sure we'll see the onside kick here. Steve Stetson is giving some last minute instructions uh, to Pat Mancini and Wise and Macri in case they do get this football. 
and uh, we didn't have time before, Sean, but I want to say it's been a pleasure working with you today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks, pal. It's been my pleasure. We've seen an excellent football game. Once again, the UMass Minutemen pulling off their come-from-behind routine. They're going to age their coaching staff in a hurry if they keep this up. Onside kick, free on the ground for a moment, but it appears the Minutemen have covered it at the 50-yard line. It bounced off the chest of Mike Tobin, a reserve split end. But I believe somebody else in a white shirt covered it. Yeah, he got a little help from a teammate there, and uh, they were able to gather that ball back in. But we're going to, you know, even if uh, the Terriers had recovered it, their right side was off sides. Scott Brown, the, the man there with Tobin, the, to assist him in uh, covering that football. Brown uh, came up with it. They'll decline the penalty, certainly. Well, it's back to the drawing board for Steve Stetson and his staff. Uh, they got to be well pleased with the first half. The second half, the real problem. They couldn't do what they wanted to do in the second half, but uh, part of that reason, uh, the UMass defense and offense finally got their act together. And it'll be a tough task for them next week. The Terriers traveling to UConn. The game you'll see here on Nesson next Saturday, live at 1 o'clock. The Terriers can stop the clock once, but they won't elect to do it. And that will be the final play of the football game. As we mentioned, it's BU at UMass next, uh, BU rather at UConn next week. Connecticut won this afternoon over the Black Bears of Maine. Tough task for Massachusetts. The Minutemen will take it, their 6-1 and one record to Holy Cross to play Coach Mark Duffner's very tough Crusaders. Final seconds ticking down, and Jim Reed is now 6-1 in his first year as head coach at UMass. 